Donovan, I'm just mad that you're not wearing the Clippers beanie I bought you for Christmas. I put a heart and soul into searching for that gift, and you just didn't bother to wear it. I told you what was going to happen immediately. I gave it away. I gave it to my father. <laughs> you gave it to your dad? <laughs> yeah. My dad likes the what Clippers. What do you mean? He likes, he likes the Clippers. And so I'm just like... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, your dad, a New Yorker living in Houston, likes the Clippers? My, my father loves to just like whatever side i'm on he's like right, i'll just pick the opposite like we've never <laughs> we've never rooted for the same team at the same time across any sport ever like it's never <laughs> happened it's yeah so he he like he likes the clippers they are in his top three teams that he wants to win a title mm. this year do you think he sees your hate on the pod and sees it on the shorts and is like fueled by that? And he's like, I'm oh, going to buy a Kawhi oh, jersey. 100%. He, he texts, <laughs> that makes sense. He texts me because he, he watches all the stuff. So he texts me and he's like, he's like, hey, like you need to lighten up on, on Kawhi. Like you, you need to lighten up on PG. Like he's, 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 a, he's a fan of them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like he actively gets, he actively gets upset. I'll go over to the house after like a Clippers loss. And he's like, man, them dang Clippers be Oh my God! He he just he actually <laughs> like he's a, he's a fan. He doesn't want to admit it, but he's he's a fan. But That's he great. but he enjoyed it though. He I gave him the beanie. <laughs> I gave him the shirt. He was like, "Oh my God, this is so nice." I was like, "You have that." <laughs> That's hilarious. ungrateful. Yeah, <laughs> facts go to hell. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome to episode sixty nine of the show. Nice. Today we are going to be going through every single team in the league. And asking one question that we want them to answer in 2024. You know, by the time this comes out, it's going to be like December 31st, year-end wrap-up. We're going to be looking forward to next year and, you know, giving every team their due and deciding what the biggest storyline for them is and what we want to find out about. 100%. Yeah. 100%. For some- this, is, this is the time. Listen, new year, new us, right? NBA teams, <laughs> NBA teams have to figure out the same thing is as, as soon as the calendar turns, are we going to be the same old, same old? Or are we going to switch stuff up? So... I'm it's a very big picture pod and this is this is my yeah. bag. This is what is why I love. I need <laughs> I need macro level NBA talk. I'm glad we're doing this. Love yeah. It. Yeah. This is some of some of these teams you already know what the answer are is gonna be, but others we're actually gonna have interesting conversation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I think macro stuff is definitely more interesting. Listen, I love breaking down why X team sucks for these numbers and this as much as anybody, but big picture stuff is just it's just more fun and more interesting to talk about for a two hour long episode. A hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah. But before we get to that, I have an announcement. Oh? As you guys saw last week, we had the PS fives. We got them in hand. Activision was great was what's the word? Gracious. Uh gracious enough to gift <laughs> us three PS fives to give to you guys Call of Duty edition. So we told you guys on Twitter, we told you on the episode, we're giving them away. I have the winners to announce. I'm gonna announce my burner, announce, out, announce my burner, announce my burner, please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. By the time this episode's out, it's going to be up on um, the Twitter account, so you might have already seen it there. We picked people. I'm pulling up the screenshots right now. It's taking forever to find them, so I'm talking through the quiet space. I got them. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the first winner, guy. at AntichristCast, I guess his name is Casper, he said... I got to win. Oh, by, by the way, we told people to reply on Twitter under the tweet you said about it to win. So I picked the replies and people that retweeted it at random. This guy said, got to win. I need a late Christmas present for the little bro. Congratulations, Casper. Your little bro gets a PS5. <laughs> little bro. Shout out to you. <laughs> Next up, we have at the underscore salamander with two R's. He said the Pistons losing 30 straight and this PS5 would make my 2023 worth it. I don't know what you have against the Pistons, <laughs> but I can make the PS5 happen. There you go. <laughs> hey, 30, 30 straight losses is going to happen too. Congratulations. Oh, it's going to be your year, buddy. <laughs> yep. Last one is at Snazzy3524. He said, me knowing damn well, I'm not going to win, but still entering. And it's a picture of Kamala Anthony saying, this is nothing new. <laughs> I got some good news for you. You want it. <laughs> uh, there you good go. job. Those are three winners of the PS5s. Give a round of applause to these guys. Exactly. <laughs> While we're giving them a round of applause, for you guys who ain't win shit, listen up, buddy. Don't get <laughs> your hearts. Don't get your hopes down. We're going to have plenty more giveaways to go in yep. the future. So continue to show us love across all socials. Mess with us on Twitter, Instagram, all that. And yeah, man, thank you for guys. Thank you guys for the support. Exactly, man. Always love giving back to you guys. We're going to keep doing it, especially with merch, which, spoiler alert, you may have some news on that department coming soon. Yeah, man. Oh, oh. If you're on YouTube right now, in the spirit of this, drop a like and subscribe. If you're on audio platforms, rate us five stars, leave a review, follow us on all socials, use our individual socials on the screen, the main TD3 ones, all that, and let's get to the rest of the show. <laughs> the cranium is crazy! Oh my-
god! I mean, I don't really don't know, don't know what to say. Crayon eaters rejoice! Mo, what is the first thing we're gonna talk about? First team that we should just go ahead and get out the way. Generational ass, the Detroit Pistons. All right. <laughs> this is something <laughs> I need the a trifecta. Of Pistons. Yeah, I need a trifecta. We're going to get this quick and easy up out the way. My first question <laughs> for the Detroit Pistons is, how are you going to fix the massive shithole that you created? Troy <laughs> Reaver created. <laughs> okay. I got, some, I got some answers. Fire everyone and book everyone <laughs> a one-way ticket to Turkestan. All right. That's the Turkish quickest way to get. Is that a place? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a real place. It's near India, Nepal, and Russia. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but there, just the amount of disappointment that's in that city and having to, again, rebuild your rebuild throughout the last four or five years is easily the most disappointing team NBA, any NBA fan has had to go through this season. Yeah. yeah. I guess my question would be can we make it 50 in a row? Can we really push the street? Can we get crazy? Can we make you guys the worst team in sports history? Is that on the is that on the cards? I think it is. I, I think it is. On the <laughs> Listen, K dropped forty points, man, and they still Twice! lost. How? Nikhil, if he's going to do that, schedule? if he's going to do that, and you are still going to lose, what is the hope? Right? Because either he dropped forty and you still lose, or you could play a team like the Utah Jazz who is in the bottom four of the conference, had nine people out, and you still lost at home. There's no hope for you. <laughs> you guys are going to lose at a generational rate. We're never going to see losers this bad. Actually, no, nah, I'll say that again, because I didn't think we would see teams as bad as, as we used to. And then the Pistons were like, hey, watch this. So <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah, may, maybe there's somebody who comes along that's worse than they are. But what they have done this year is a disgrace. It, it really yeah. is. We, we saw them boys lose to the Brooklyn Nets. That's what broke the record. Lose to the Brooklyn Nets. Mikhail Bridges put up a generational selling performance. Y'all talking about me selling the drafts? No, fuck that. Watch <laughs> Mikhail Bridges last night. See how many free throws he missed last game, bro. I have no words to describe what these Pistons fans are going through whatsoever. Isaac, what's your analysis and shindig behind what's going on over there? No, they just fucking suck. What do you want me to do my analysis? You want me to break down the, the worst team of all time? None of the players are good. None of the players fit together. The whole, I guess the point of hiring Monty Williams was to do this like overhaul of the culture. That shit hasn't worked. Clearly, there's not the buy-in necessary because, you know, the, the talk is usually like, this team is too talented for all that. If, if you believe that, then clearly it's a coaching Damn. issue. But I don't even think that's the true case because these players just aren't that good. They're starting Isaiah Stewart at the four next to a traditional five. What team do you know where that would be a good team construction? That is coaching. And there's also there's also not a team yeah. that, that would do that, right? So like yeah, you guys, terrible. Yeah, you guys are down horrendously. Um, and your three sorry. best players, none of them are good three-point shooters. You're starting two traditional bigs. I guess Isaiah Stewart can shoot a little bit, but like not great. He's not a super great spacer. You got Alec Burks taking game-winning shots because he thinks he's him calling his number, losing them the game. Like, th there's just no redeeming qualities to this roster. It's poorly constructed and very untalented from top to bottom. Yeah, what's like what sucks as just like NBA fan looking at this Pistons team? For me personally, I said that I think in my pre in my uh, post preseason predictions, this team should be in contention for a play-in spot, like at minimum. I don't think they're gonna make this shit, but they should be. <laughs> Up in the running, they should have no business being the worst team in the NBA. The poor, they should be better than the Portland Trailblazers right now. They have Shouldn't no business that, being. I get what you are. thought that. I get what you thought that because like it makes sense that a young team continue to take steps. Exactly. But they just don't have good players that fit together. Like no. simple and play, they're not Ex good. Exact. No, but they do have good players. You're right. Just the second part of your sentence was all yeah. the money. Just together, they're just not. They're not good at all. Yeah. And it's 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 so disheartening. I mean, I want to cry right now. I feel so, so sorry for I've, you, fans. <laughs> I have one question for y'all, right? And I guess we can end the piss and talk because we don't have to spend a lot of time on them. They have 52 games left in their season. How many more games do they win this year? Three at most. They're going to go three and 49 for the next four months. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> five months. Whatever. I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, realistically, maybe like 10. I don't know. Maybe they're not going to be the worst team of all time. Like, Honestly, how do we even predict that? Because, like, <laughs> if you're generational ass, like, there's no, like, 
Uh, What's the remaining schedule look like? <laughs> look, <laughs> you know what's crazy? It doesn't matter because it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Really does game it, by yeah. game, they're going to be picked to lose every game, so there's no way to predict this. <laughs> Bro, now, hey, listen, you're right. They might, they might only win three games. They, according, <laughs> listen, they have the fourth hardest schedule left in the oh, NBA. Oh shit! <laughs> it's of course, they might because be every team's better than them, so every game is a hard game. <laughs> it's over. now to be devil's advocate. They have been in trade rumors with the Pascal Siak, Pascal Siakam's OG <laughs> underdobies in the world. Is that moving the needle? Do I think they let should the do it? For OG. No, please let the trade for OG. That'd be hysterical. <laughs> let them give up of a substantial part of their future for twelve wins instead of six. Please yeah, do nah. it. Get yeah, Blake Griffin on the phone gonna now. Leave. Blake Griffin on the phone, bro. And it's the worst part about all this is that this is the most traction and the most that anybody has ever talked about the Pistons since <laughs> they probably traded for Blake Griffin. And before that, since 2005, 2006, when they won the championship. So yeah. they're done. Oh, four. Yeah, that's oh, hilarious. Oh, four. There we that's go. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, they're down bad. Let's move on. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas. Let's move on. <laughs> pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he'll pick up that phone next week. He's probably been calling the other line. He has Troy Weaver on speed dial. <laughs> oh man, Donovan, what team do you want to talk about first? Let's get, get back get to a relevant team. Yeah. All right, we're gonna talk about the Boston Celtics real quick. Um, okay. What's your question? My question is, and it's very simple. Will we win a championship in 2024? That is the <laughs> only, that's the only question for the Celtics because the answer to that question is going to lead to a lot other questions that will you know kind of dictate how the franchise is going to move because if they okay, don't let's say the answer is no what happens if the answer is no then now you have to ask is Jalen brown gone is joe missoula gone what are like where are we going to divert resources on the bench because you went all in on a very top heavy roster is somebody yeah. is somebody gonna have to go are we still comfortable bringing out horford back at his advanced age in terms of like nba terms right they they are going to have an expensive payroll once Jalen Brown's extension kicks in. Uh, Christoph Porzingis just got a new deal. Tatum Tatum has money. Like everybody is going to get paid, and if they don't have a ring to show for it, serious changes are going to have to be made. So that's the biggest question for them this year. Interesting, Mo. I have a question for you about based on that. I want your perspective because I guess I just got done of an answer. If they make the finals and they lose to let's call it the Nuggets, do they fire Joe Mazzulla? Do you fire the coach that gets you to the finals? Because they're that good and have that high of expectations. If they make the finals, then I don't think they you lose. fire Joe Mazzula. And you lose, you don't fight. You don't fire him in any circumstances. I think the only the only way you fire him is if you either lose the conference finals or don't even make that. You know, I think that should be Dude. the expectation set. You don't just. I don't know. I I hate the culture that we that the, I think I hate what the NBA has turned into over the last few years in terms of just firing coaches true true um, it's very crazy and having them on us sh- on the shortest lease possible you know i think that especially there's a lot the of white ones nate mcmillan he deserved that shit doc rivers he deserved <laughs> that shit hey, and i'm all for the people but hey <laughs> those scenarios <laughs> but in general like <laughs> go ahead he said no 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 even the black <laughs> 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 Steven Silas, out of here. <laughs> Not wrong. Mo had, Mo wanted no parts of that discourse. <laughs> we might get nasty here, but no, nah, like, I think we've been into, we've had a nasty, a nasty NBA culture of having coaches on the shortest lease possible, even though there are either personnel mm-hmm. flaws that need to be addressed. And the Boston Celtics are not perfect, but they're damn near perfect. And I think that if they do come short, well, pause like a motherfucker. I'm so sorry. Oh, what a reach. What a reach. Yeah. Okay. You just never Keep know going. the two of y'all. We, Keep were, going. Um, we weren't even thinking then like that. If they do have some shortcomings, then I'm reverting back to I- to Donovan's point. It is personnel based. It's a personal yeah. issue. That's a good point. There is definitely like coaches. Are, it's you no, know, it's the easiest time to scapegoat coaches because players make so much money. And like you tie, you pay a Jalen Brown, it's hard to move him. It's hard. You're not going to move a Jason Tatum. Like there's only. The way the NBA is moving into being everyone is a max contract or a minimum contract, it's harder to make personnel moves than ever when you're these contending teams. So I think that's why the coaches get scapegoated more than ever. That's why like Mike Budenholzer got fired after leading, winning a championship and being consistently great every year. So you're right. Coaches are never safe. So maybe that shouldn't be a thing, but I think it will be. I think he would be the scapegoat if they don't win a championship. He he 100% he will be. And if they if they're 
offense kind of fizzles out the way that everybody thinks it can be because of their like three point heavy offense and because of the variance, you are yeah. going to have a subsection of people that are like, well, they're just too three point focused. Like you just can't have that kind of offense. And Missoula is going to be the guy. And there were times, yeah. there were times last year where it didn't look like Missoula really knew what he was doing. There were several games in that conference finals where after, after a loss, Missoula comes back and he's like, it's my fault. I didn't have the guys ready to play. And as a coach, that's what you're supposed to say. But also at a certain at a certain point, have you guys ready to play? Like you guys, you guys yeah. clearly were the more talented team. And there were times where they weren't necessarily prepared to go into games. So I do think that he would be first on the chopping block if they don't win a championship. Because like I said earlier, the money's too big. It's championship or bust for the Celtics right now. And they just need to figure out, are we going to be champions or not? So, yeah, I think it's a good point with the three point reliance thing. Cause if this New York team's the Celtics, if it was mine, I would have said, is the three point reliance going to be an issue? Cause <laughs> I think if it does become an issue, it actually is Joe Mazzulla's fault. Cause that is something he implemented and kind of changed identity after I made Yudoka, made them a more modern offense, if you will. And I think that's kind of the one worry I have about them. Like, listen, I watch the Christmas game as much as anybody. They beat the shit out of the Lakers. Lakers made a fake <laughs> comeback, but they, they routed them. End to end, they were the better team. That's going to happen a lot. But I'm just worried that in a playoff atmosphere, when they place, face against another team that is clicking all cylinders, maybe the Bucks figure their weaknesses out and are almost equal footing, I really do worry that we're going to see the same issues we saw with them before these trades, where they don't have the playmaking, they get through point reliant, and when the Knights with the shots don't fall, like it can happen against Miami, they get flooded because you know the other team has other ways to score besides through point reliance. Yeah. Jason Tatum hasn't been attacking the rim like you'd want. Jalen, we're still gonna have the issues of Jalen Brown being forced to be a creator when teams double Jason Tatum. Like, I'm a little bit worried those same habits are gonna come out, which is the only reason that I don't think they're like the clear gonna win the championship like everybody else does. Yeah. So I'm, 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 my question would be that: is are they able to find variance in their offense to not fall into the same problems? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. And hopefully they do because this is some that variance that you're talking about. A couple months ago, Joe Mazzulla hopped on JJ Reddick's podcast and was talking about how they didn't have a one two punch necessarily or any or any counterattacks to their offense or to to the yeah to their offense whenever mm-hmm. a defense would settle into what they're trying to do and sniff out what they're trying to do and so hopefully by that time comes yeah, i hope y'all are right and they do have that other than that like in my opinion if something happens and they and they collapse they need to look at jalen brown and possibly put him in the market and see what they can get for him, right? Before, I look at Jalen Brown first before I look at getting rid of Joe Mazzulla personally. Yeah. yeah. But honestly, it's funny we're talking about all this. The, the, the hilarious part of the conversation is we're talking about worst case scenario. That's yeah. if they don't win a championship, they have such crazy high expectations being the best team in the league right now that the only way we can talk about them is like if they don't win a championship, what happens? Because it seems like they're going to win a championship. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They've also been, on, crazy they, they've been on the doorstep and they've been as close as you can ask. For a team to like consistently yeah. get there. So it's about time you do it. Get it done. Yeah. Let's, let's know the favorites right now. Isaac. That. We'll see if that happens. What team should we, do you have a question about? Should we just go to the other most famous team of all time? Should I just do the Lakers up front? Yeah. Go ahead. Let's do it. We know you want to. You're itching for it. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. Woohoo. And this obviously will be a more pessimistic conversation. The whole Celtics conversation was like, we expect them to win the finals. If they don't, what happens? I don't currently expect the Lakers to win the finals. So my question is, okay, so let me retread that a little bit. The only way they're going to win the finals is if they have an elite defense. Can we can we agree on that? Absolutely. Yes. They have to be a top five defense and a good enough offense. Yes. That's been the recipe ever since they got LeBron. The only way this team can be a top five defense is with Jared Vanderbilt playing big minutes and leading that team defensively with Anthony Davis. My question is, is that possible? Because this motherfucker stinks on offense right now. He is <laughs> ruining their offense. Every time he touches the court and you pair him with Anthony Davis on the court at the same time, Anthony Davis is neutered. His stats scoring with Jared Vanderbilt on or off are hilarious. It's like 30 points per game, another 24. And the rim <laughs> scoring is like night and day because Jared Vanderbilt just murders their spacing. He's currently averaging, I'll pull it up. I saw it <clears> on Twitter the other day, a hilarious stat line. It's like 1.5 points per game on 28% field goal percentage. That's so dirty, bro. Oh my bro. God. Yeah. It's like we're, hit, we're at peak Andre Roberson levels of impact on defense being great, but offensively just tanks you. And listen, we saw him play last year, and that wasn't the case. They, there's a way to make it work, especially when we saw him in Minnesota playing next to a floor spacing big like Cat. Yeah. But the problem the Lakers currently have is, like I said, they need him to be a top five defense. That's their championship ceiling. 
But with Anthony Davis as he is now without having a jump shot these days and really just being like the best rim finisher roll man in the league and just really decimating you down low off offensive rebounds and rolls, you can't have a non-shooting four next to him. It destroys your offense. That spacing just doesn't work. So that's a big conundrum because if you need him to be good, but he also makes you impossible to be good, you probably have to trade him, right? You have to find a new identity. Yeah, exactly. And the situation is just so much worse when your shooters that you're passing out to is, of course, LeBron, who's been good, no shot to him or whatever. But you got Cam Reddish, who's a really inconsistent shooter. And then you have Torian Prince, who's hit or miss every other night. And so <laughs> seeing what's going on at Lakerland and just the constant like they're in hell right now. They've made three or four lineup changes. What? They've had Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell starting together, subbed out uh, Austin Reeves, put him on a bench, and had D'Lo just be the lone starting guard. <laughs> they got the ass with a couple nights ago and been on this like insane, not insane losing streak, but they, they've they been definitely more, way more down than they were up. And they put both of them on a bench, and now they have these two, Cam Reddish and Torian Prince starting, and now LeBron's back at point guard. They're in hell right now. All Try those changes out, is insane. So, Jared Vanderbilt is averaging 1.5 points and 0.6 assists on 28% from the field. He's made zero Jared, threes this year. He's made bro, zero threes this year. That's having zero, that's, that's yeah, what. Granted, he was hurt for a long time. He was hurt for the first part of the season, but still, it's been like 10 <laughs> games, no threes. <laughs> Yeah, man. Bro. I listen. I think for the Lakers, one to answer your question, I I think that it's possible. I I think that they can get to a conference finals, maybe even the finals with Jared Vanderbilt on the roster and playing um, major minutes. I think that. Yeah. I, I I think that for a lot of teams, and we've seen like the Warriors do this um, over the past couple of years. When you get into playoff series. Things are very, very matchup based, right? So there might be, yeah. there might be a series where you, you know, you get Vanderbilt on the floor and you just say, "We're going to turn this into a rock fight for seven games, and we are going <laughs> to, we're just going to make this as physical, as slow down as possible." And in that situation, I trust LeBron to make the right decisions in critical moments to, to you know, to vault you guys forward. Then you might have another series where it's like, hey, we're just going to have a lot of offense. So, Jared, you're just not going to play. And you really have to pick your spots. Yeah. But I think for the Lakers, being mm -hmm. versatile is probably going to be their biggest strength. And being able to switch back and forth between just a heavy, heavy offensive team or a heavy, heavy defensive team. And I think that integrating Vanderbilt and having that defensive ceiling, that's always a nice weapon to have in your pocket to just say, Hey, for five minutes, we're gonna lock you down, and there's nothing that you can do about it. So I, I think they can get to that to that level. Yeah, wow. I agree. It, but it, they have to get they have to get to the playoffs first and have a good seed so they don't get That's bounced by the Nuggets first round. And like Mo said, since they won the in season tournament, it's been turmoil because they just granted there's been some injuries like it has been all year for them. But th they've had AD and LeBron healthy and playing well and are still <laughs> losing more games than they're winning. IST tournament hangover that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no what I agree with you. The versatility is good. That's the current line it brings them, mm -hmm. but they got to find their go to bread and butter first before they can get into trying to think of other looks for a playoff series. Mm -hmm. They have to find a steady lineup that makes sense to be the go to. And like I said, that would have to include Jared Vanderbilt if you want to be an elite defense. So exactly, it's not going to happen. I don't think with Vanderbilt and AD Bowl starting, you're going to have to use Vanderbilt as essentially your backup five and try to find in the trade market or buyout market another big that can space the floor a little bit to play next to him. That's essential because the big, their biggest problem now is they have Jackson Hayes and Christian Wood as their backup bigs who don't really give them anything right now. That'll make Jared Vanderbilt useful. But I'm starting to think maybe they have to just make moves and completely change the philosophy and like you're not going to be an elite defense this year. So yeah. maybe that makes Zach Levine trade make more sense. The if philosophy not, has like, changed like four or five times already this season. I think. <laughs> Fucking Dar yeah. Darvin Ham, again, remind you, back in... What August September? He was saying AD needs to take six threes a game so far this season. <laughs> that hasn't happened <laughs> at all. We did not yeah. forget. Yeah. We have you on record <laughs> file saying that. <laughs> yeah, so, but again, maybe Zach Levine trade makes sense now. Maybe this type of look, defensive heavy, is going to be hard to make work with Jared Vanderbilt. So maybe you go offense and you get Levine. Hold on, Isaac. The streets are talking. Can I interest you in a Dejounte Murray? Good fucking lord, no! You cannot <laughs> you take that shit and send it anywhere else. <laughs> you can interest in Orlando Magic with a DeJounte Murray if you'd like. <laughs> no, man, that's funny. I mean, don't sleep on DeJounte Murray too much now. And I understand he's not your favorite archetype of player, but he is very valuable and he could fix a lot of problems that the Lakers do have. And it's in an terms awful of just, 
<laughs> and in terms of needing someone who brings a level of consistency on both ends and not leaning too hard, because I feel like if you lean too hard into either all defense and all offense at that at that point in time on a non basketball level, that's when you mess with players' look, psyche. Look and me in the eye. In con- look me in the eye through this camera. <laughs> Are you seriously going to tell me that DeJounte Murray this year has been the poster boy for consistency defensively? As a Hawks to do fan? with DeJounte Murray. I'm, not, I'm off the DeJounte Murray right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to scam your ass. I'm from Atlanta. Look, you got me. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, you need a player who can help find and solidify your identity. Could he be yeah. DeJounte Murray? Listen, man, we can Go talk off hell. the pot if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, broker I, can deal, fuck the, off. <laughs> I can run you through the My League simulation right now if you want to. Bro. <laughs> man, what's your next team, Mo? <laughs> All right. So you mentioned it earlier. The next team is the Orlando Magic. Um, mm. We can keep this semi short, but who is the point guard of the future? This team is yes. here. Paolo Bencaro is trotting his way, in my opinion, to his first All-Star game. Franz Wagner is a great player. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr.'s back. Their rookie, Anthony Black, has been solid as possible. But with all that being said, they have still a hole at that point guard spot. And that hole is they need someone to shoot. And currently they have Markel Fultz, who's only played like five games this season, a total of like maybe two hours on the court. And in those two hours (laughs) of playing basketball, he's took four threes. Two hours of basketball, only playing, shooting four threes. And with those two hours of basketball that he's been on the court, the Orlando Magic have a defensive, have an offensive rating with him on the court of 107. With him off, they have like 115, which makes them Whew. closer to league average. Crazy. Yeah, and if you pay, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not even good, but it's a lot better. It's a lot better than yeah. what they are with him. Yeah, 107 is abysmal. I agree. The problem with this question is, I don't think we're going to get the answer this year. I think this is maybe a next offseason answer if they can figure it out. But I don't see this being answered imminently. So I agree. That's what they got to answer. But I don't see like a clear solution coming anytime soon. Yeah, I think I think the move for them or the only way that this gets answered is if they make a deal. And I so I think like, that the question for them is, are we going to speed up our timeline? Because yeah. Because you guys are fourth in the East right now. Very good defensively. Like you said, Paolo's on his way to, to an all-star game. Do you want to say, all right, we got to make the move right now. We'll take some of these young players, some of these picks. We'll ship them out. And we're going to start being in win-now mode. And we're going to get the point guard of the future, quote-unquote, in the building right now. I think that's more of the question for the Magic. And how serious do you take this very successful season? And how you know how much do you press the gas? I think that... That's going to be very interesting this offseason and even at the deadline to see what they want to do. I think yeah. a, a good way to frame that, they don't have to go all in and find like the point guard of the future necessarily, but get a point guard similar to what the Minnesota Timberwolves did with trading for Mike Conley. Get a point guard who can help lay the blueprint and foundation of what you should have going into the future. That way you don't have to buy in too hard and sell off hella picks for no absolutely no reason and just have someone steady, ready, and someone who can fucking shoot and play okay defense. That's it. Yeah, it's I, not, agree. I think that's not definitely a lot of thing. It's not a, yeah. not a lot of those solid three and sure. point guards. <laughs> I was thinking about that too. I was like, I was thinking of the Mike Conley example exactly. And I was thinking, I was like, who's going to be available this trade deadline? Like, it seems like DeJounte's in the trade block. I don't think any of us want that fit. We're talking about shooting as the number one thing they need. DeJounte's become a good enough shooter to not tank you, but not an overtly impactful shooter. So it's not a good fit there. He's been a good shooter. He's shooting like 38% from the three point line this year. No, yeah, that but there's a difference. Is good. No, no, but there's a but difference between being mean. a floor spacer and being uh, that type of shooter he is and shooting a high percentage on a lower volume. Maybe yeah. his volume's higher this year than I expect. I don't, maybe that'll surprise me. But you know, he's not like coming off of screens, not somebody that defense is going to like really be threatened by. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not his game for sure. I want to throw like a name out here Simons. for you guys. I want to throw a name okay. out here for you guys. If you were the Magic, would you call up the New York Knicks and see what what's the price for Emmanuel Quickly? Mm. I like that a lot. Right? Do because you think Emmanuel Quickly is that much better than Cole Anthony? Are they just getting two six men that aren't great defenders? It's true. <laughs> I think. Well, I do you think want I, him starting for you? Yeah, I, I do. Okay. I think. I, and listen, quickly hasn't been like as good this year as he was last year when he was like, you know, based, like what third? I think in the in the sixth yeah. round of the year. But 
he is he's his money is is about to be on the table right the knicks are about to have to pay him and they have a lot of decisions and so i think if you are if you're the magic right you want to you want to get a guy still young can can chew all these things that, that we're talking about can give effort on the defensive end like yeah. There's 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 something there maybe if you if you want to talk about it and something that might work out for for both parties so I think I think that might be an interesting call to take I wouldn't hate that I like who that. else is there man right and I don't know who else is on the trade market like there's not a ton of point guards available right now that we can it, project going forward if they can't we can we can end this Orlando Magic conversation here but if they can't pull the trigger on finding a a PG to give them that spacing, that's completely fine. Mike Conley's literally a free agent uh, this offseason, <laughs> and they can make some shake right there. <laughs> there you but, go, man. Mike Conley, welcome to this team. <laughs> yeah. Who's next? Dom, who's your next team? All right, we're going to have uh, just a short conversation. I want to know what you guys think. We're going to talk about the Portland Trailblazers real quick. And the, okay. que- the question is, are we building correctly around Scoot Henderson? Because mm. it is very clear that, right, you just took Scoop second overall. He's had his ups and downs. He's been playing better in December than he has in the first two months of the season. I would ask the, the Blazers, you see what's going on in Detroit. You have an athletic guard who can't really shoot, and you have him surrounded with non-shooters. If Scoot is the guy that you want to build around, are you going to have proper shooting around him so that your slashing point guard can get to the rim and do the things that he does best? And so for them, I want them to figure out, are we doing this the right way? Because he's clearly the guy that you want to that you want to build around or that you're at least going to divert resources to make sure that he is in the best situation possible to develop. Yeah. Bro. My answer to that would be settle down. I think this might be Anthony Anthony Simons' team. Exactly. <laughs> I was saying, I don't even right now with the stage that this team is on, the, the spot of for being the guy is up for grabs. And Anthony Simons exactly. is killing it right now. 27 points per game, 5.3 assists, 3.1 rebounds, 40% from three off of a high volume of off the dribble threes, and 45% from the field. He is killing it. Before the year started, I said he'd win most improved player. He's not going to make it because he missed 20 games to start the season. If that wasn't the case, I think he would probably be the favorite with Tyrese Maxey right now. He's Easily. been a legitimate star level player just on a team nobody cares about. So, you guys, so, so you guys don't think that Scoot, like, I, it's like Scoot is, I, it's still hard for me to, to think that they are not going to divert a lot of resources to make sure that like Scoot no, is, right. is, is developing, right. pro, you know, properly and that he, that like they are going to do everything in their power to make sure that like, Hey, if it doesn't work out, it's not going to be because of us. It's going to be because of him. Yeah, yeah. So I just like, and him and Simons, fine, right? You're, you, listen, you're going to be bad anyway. You don't have to have a perfectly constructed championship team. But are you going to have him out there with two other non-shooters and then two traditional bigs like like the Pistons? Are you going to do that? Or are hmm. you going to be somewhat competent offensively to where people can run around and actually play basketball? I think that's the, <laughs> yeah. that's the question. Yeah. yeah, I think I agree. They're going to have to put Scoot in the best position to show that he was worth that pick. And, you know, he's been – he was trash to start the year. He's getting a little bit better now. People are overreacting a little bit to that. I think we probably have to recalibrate expectations a little bit with, like, Absolutely. maybe he's not going to be one of the best guards in the league. But jury's still extremely out. He could still be extremely good. But I think what Mo said of, like, the position of franchise players up for grabs right now, mm-hmm. I think there's definitely still in that route where they're not going to jump the gun and, like – they're not going to trade Simons like we thought they might, you know? Yeah. I think – they don't, th- with the way Scoot's been playing and the way they have so much time left in this rebuild, they're not going to move Simons and end up regretting it if Scoot doesn't become like a star star, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And at this point in time, if I'm like a Trailblazers fan or taking it even further, if I'm a part of their front office, I'm sitting down here with my arms crossed and I'm just thinking in the back of my head, I'm not having any of these conversations out loud, but I'm just thinking <laughs> to myself, who's going to who's gonna be the one to get traded out of this Cora, Shaden, Sharp, Anthony Simons or Scoop because I can't keep three of them. I'm not gonna. I am not gonna have another Damian Lewis, S. C. D. McCollum situation. <laughs> that's in, that's insane trauma and PTSD. Can't put those fans through that again. And so, you're, this is just a waiting game that they have to play. And they honestly, I think they this waiting game that they're playing right now is one of the best positions positions that any fan in the NBA could be because they're actually winning games here and there and not not they're not a complete like lost cause. They're <laughs> not the Pistons, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Interesting. I mean, logic would say it would be Simons. You know, he's the oldest. His timeline is accelerated. He's on a second contract. 
but he's killing it. And Facts. maybe there's a little bit of doubt setting in that Scoot isn't the athlete we thought he was. Maybe isn't the scorer we thought he was. Like maybe maybe <laughs> Simon is a better big. player in five years. He's just strong. That's it. <laughs> he's just <laughs> <a> strong. <laughs> yeah. So like you're right. It is a it's a weird problem to have, but it's a good one long term because inevitably you have at least one player that can be moved for complementary pieces going forward as the rebuild continues to progress. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Do you want to open up the next can of worms, Isaac? The next can of worms. What a good transition verbiage. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's see. You give a bad team. Let's go to an interesting team. My question about the Philadelphia 76ers. Ooh. Can they get another wing defender on this team? Mm. And mm. is it OG Ananobi? Ooh. OG on this team would be so tough. That's something that, that no one that has moves any me. real conversation. That moves me. Yeah. Moves me yeah. Wow. This team is good. They're legit. Listen, I talked about it at length. I have converted to a Joel Embiid truther. I'm all <laughs> in on Nick Nurse and Tyrese Maxey being everything we need around Joel Embiid to make a legit run at a championship, barring good health, which is always impossible to bar because he's never done it. He does. <laughs> yeah. This team is legit. This team it can very feasibly be the second best team in the East. And if that's the case, you got as good of a chance as anybody as ups- by upsetting the Celtics and potentially making a run. This would be the best year they've had in years to do that. But they'd have an even better chance if they use some of those picks that they got in the James Harden trade when they reloaded with assets and found another defender. Right now, they're starting Tyrese Maxey, DeAnthony Melton, and um, Kelly Oubre next to Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid in the front court. That's okay. And DeAnthony Melton's been good. He's a good on-ball defender. Kelly Oubre's been good. I'd personally feel a lot better if one of those guys was your sixth man. Their bench is decent, but not great. And I think if you could bring in one more core piece there to really shore up your defense, I'd feel very comfortable with their depth. Hmm. Man. Okay. It, it makes it makes sense. It makes sense. I yeah. think for for a team who we've seen like has fizzled out, right? If you can get OJ Ananobi, who obviously has ties to Nick Nurse, that would be fantastic. And when you're going up against teams like the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics, having wing defenders is really freaking important, and it would be very, <laughs> it would be very helpful. So yeah, I like, Correct. I, I like that that idea, and I think that that is interesting to just see how much of like how much of buyers that they are at the deadline. So yeah, yeah I'm I'd imagine that. they'll be heavily buyers. Like I know they're a good team; they're a top ten offense and defense. Last time I checked, maybe they fell out of one. Who knows? Things move quickly. You're right; they are great. That's a recipe to be a great team. But despite being a good defense, they're a good defense mostly because Joel Embiid has been incredible. He's been like putting on an all-defense caliber rim defense year. They're seventh in rim efficiency, but they're 23rd in rim volume given up because they don't have the best on-ball defenders that stop people from getting in the first place. I you know if you have Joel Embiid back there, it's like a prime Rudy Gobert in the Jazz situation where that's okay because he'll clean up a lot of your mistakes. But that that's the thing. They're 25th in points of possession against isolations, 19th against post-ups. Those two things both scream to me. You got a lot of small guards that are being attacked in Tyrus Maxey and Melton. And, you know, they're not horrible defenders, but, you know, it would be nice to have another big body to prevent that in most lineups. Facts. It's just a lot of small things where they can shore up a lot of things around the edges on both sides of the ball if they have another wing defender that can make threes. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. Let's say Masai Ujiri, he's just acting like how we know he's probably going to act whenever he gets on the phone (laughs) and people mention OG or Pascal. What is another potential option that you would want to sell or that you would want to buy? Could it be maybe yeah. potentially a Jeremy Grant? Would you try for a mm, Larry Markinen or what? Those guys are too expensive, I think. I, I would look mm. at like a Royce O'Neal or something, like a good role player that's on a team that's willing to make moves. Damn, Royce O'Neal, that's just a fall off from hell compared to OG. Not really. Royce I mean, it's good. fine. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, it would just take like one first round pick. It would, it would be like instead of going all in, you again find one more person to make your depth really good, whether it be OG, maybe Dorian Finney Smith, someone like that that's on a rebuilding team that could be moved. Uh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that thought process. They got they got like, the assets for it. And I want to see them <laughs> want to see them put it to use because this is their time more than ever. Yeah. 100%. And so this could be their time to make that move at the deadline with those assets. And like see they get an OG who's gonna be a pending free agent. They would have to send assets out to get him and then hope they have a wink wink deal in place to resign him so it makes sense. Or maybe if that's not something that makes sense, they wait until the summer to try to sign him outright because they can clear up cap space, which would basically involve waving everybody besides Tyrese and uh Joel Embiid. <laughs> so, you know, there's options. They don't have to do with the deadline. Yeah. But I think they probably see as much as I do that 
this is a year they can make a legit exactly, run. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, you might feel pressure to not waste the best year of Joel Embiid's career. Yeah, I, I agree. Exactly. Time is now. Time is now, Philly. Yep. Yeah, he's Joel's 30 years old and he's not getting any younger. And Wait, he's only 30? What? Yeah, he's 30, bro. Oh my no, God. Really? There's no yeah, way. Yeah, fact check me, bro. He's 30. Joel What's crazy? Embiid? 30. Joel crazy, Embiid bro. is 29. He's 29. Until March. Oh, no. he's the same birthday as me. I forgot about that. He has the same birthday. Him and Blake Griffin Our, both born on the same day as me. Wow. Oh, Just nice. five years prior. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, that's that is that is crazy, man. He's finna be 30 by the end of the season. He's not gonna my point is he's not gonna hey, get any healthier man. as time goes on. Yep. Which and sucks. if he and if he has a healthy playoff run this year, it might be the only one he has in the next four years. So you cannot waste it. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Speaking of uh Joel and Beat, I guess it's only fair to talk about the other best center in the NBA, Nicole Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Okay. So my biggest question for them. It's not really a question. We all know how good they are. We've seen the Bruce Brown replacements, a.k.a. Uh, Christian Braun and uh, Payne Watson. They've done a lot of good things. They've had a stellar season off the bench so far. But it's just a general question. Can they stay healthy? Can they really lock in uh, once that time goes around? And I'm assuming, yeah, yeah we just heard today that, what's his name? Um Aaron Gordon got his face bitten off. <laughs> Not bitten off, but he got bitten, Jesus. Off. bitten off. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had an accident where a dog bit him on Christmas Day, and he's going to be out for some, some time. We don't know exactly how long. Yeah, exactly. And so just general health questions. That's it. How good can Jamal Murray be in the playoffs? I'd assume it's going to be fantastic as usual. No real questions over there. So any questions feel like, that y'all have? I feel like what you're dancing around and what you're really asking is, are they going to give a fuck come playoff time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, they don't give a damn. Joel, yeah. Nikola Jokic does not give a fuck about the sport right now in regular season. He is coasting. <laughs> That's hilarious. Coasting like yeah. we've never seen before, bro. We've seen him have, like, straight up some of the worst run, some of the worst ball over the last two years in the course of, like, two weeks. And yeah. with the type of ball that he's playing, it's just, like, it's not like he's actually been straight up lazy, well, maybe it, maybe that is what it is. He's just being straight up lazy. It's just, it's just like one of those moments right now. Listen, it's a championship hangover, MVP hangover. He's not playing for an MVP anymore. We can shut down. We all thought he'd win the MVP coming into the season. He doesn't want it. And if you're going to win MVP, you got to want that shit bad. He does not. He's currently mm-hmm. shooting 64% at the rim. His lowest since his rookie year. He's just missing bunnies. He's a seven-footer just missing bunny because he's not trying that hard. That's simply what it is. Yeah, man, they'll, they'll be all right. And we've seen the Nuggets, like, listen, at the end of, of last regular season, we've seen the mm-hmm. Nuggets go stretches of basketball where it's like, eh, we're fine, right? We're just coast. And like you said, after the championship, now it's, all it's about is can we get back there? Can we be healthy whenever the playoffs come? Because this is a team that their championship last year probably could have came either a year or two earlier if it wasn't for injuries. And so now they yep. want to make sure they want to be 100% healthy. And so I will check in 100% or I will start being concerned about the Denver Nuggets if we get to post All-Star break and they still look like this because there's going to be a ramp up process and there's going to be a process of, you know, trying not to peak too early or get or peak at the right time. Talk to me in March about the Nuggets and if they are still looking lethargic, then I will say, okay, maybe maybe there's something maybe there's something here, right? Maybe we need yeah, to, yeah. to check in a little bit more. The other thing is, though, that's the thing. They're lethargic. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10 games, and they're firmly in the two seed. They're not yeah. going to fall below the three seed because the top three have a pretty big lead over the rest of the conference. I think this will be who they are for most of the regular season. And like Donovan said, they'll have a ramp-up come towards the end of the year where they know they got to get into real game intensity ready for the playoffs. It's kind of where we're at the point where we've seen with a lot of contained teams over previous years. There's been years where like the Celtics were the three seed instead of the one, or the Bucks were the three seed instead of the one, whatever it may be. We don't really give a fuck because we know what they're playing for. That's kind of where we're at with the Nuggets at this point. Yeah. Agreed. I agree. What's your next team, Donovan? Um, all right, let's go here because I think this is kind of interesting. I want to talk about the Indiana Pacers. And, okay. Mm. And my question is, can they get Paul George to come home? Woo! <laughs> I love it. I did not see that coming. That surprised I, me. <laughs> I think, I think, listen, Paul George is 33 years old. The Clippers have, they've been playing well, but... Right. If they don't have the season that they think that they will have, like if they don't win a championship, if they don't get to, to the conference finals or anything like that, what does it look like when Paul George is up for an extension? Kawhi Leonard is up for an extension. James Harden needs needs his money as well. 
where do they go? And if you're the Pacers, you have Tyrese Halliburton, you have a franchise cornerstone. Can you get a two-way wing to help take your team to the next level? Another on-ball creator, somebody who also can play off-ball of Tyrese. And now you have two stars, two all-stars on your team to take this like win now mode and start making a push towards the top of the Eastern Conference for real, for real. I want to see that'd be awesome. I want to see that that happen. And there's been a little bit of chatter yeah. about Paul George going back to Indiana. How serious are the Pacers about bringing somebody Listen, in to help Tyrese? That's why I you say to. a little bit of you say a little bit of chatter. I think it's been a lot of bit of chatter behind closed doors because <laughs> on Paul George's podcast, he slipped in that Tyrese Halliburton showed him around some of the new eateries over there in, in, in Indiana. Apparently, they be throwing that shit down. Do I believe it? Hell no. Nah. I've been to Indiana plenty of times. They do not throw that shit down. But regards to the fact, <laughs> regards to the fact, this would be a seamless fit. Paul George is, is one of the most, probably the most seamless fit NBA player in the NBA point blank period. But seeing him next to Tyrese and set that, that just like we are going to lock down and put more effort into mm -hmm. playing defense and be play the game more holistically instead of leaning 110% on just simply getting buckets. I think that'll be beautiful, beautiful for them because they're wing options. And Aaron Naismith, he's been a great defender, but on offense, he's not as great as you'd want him, of course. Bruce Brown, he's been good, but he's had an up and down season. Buddy Heald is literally has literally most Pacers fans in hell. Um, and so they just they need they need someone who can be that secondary initiator and they need a, just straight up another star. Yeah, because I can't lie to you. Halbert can't here. lie to you. Yeah, there's nothing I want more in 2024 NBA free agency than for Paul George to decline his player option and sign with the Pacers. This would we be need incredible. It, it would be this fire. Be awesome. Storyline wise, Bro. awesome. On court wise, incredible duo for all the reasons you guys just said. Perfect fit. And just get us out of the hellscape that is the Clippers. They're playing great right now. I can't get myself to find too much hope in it because, you, you know, we know what to expect come playoff time with the Clippers these, these, the way the past few years have gone down. Mm -hmm. This would free us of that. Get us an awesome duo, a good storyline to make Paul George extremely likable again. The podcast would be on fire. It would be great. Mm. I need him to do this. Yeah. We need it. Paul George, listen. Listen to us. Go home. Go home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the streets need it. The taxes are too high. You, you don't even like it like that. Don't try to pretend you do. Exactly. We know he misses fishing too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you love Oklahoma. You love Indiana. I promise. Yeah. Just a small town guy. We get it. So, yeah. <laughs> You'll love being back. I love in town. that. I love that. <laughs> that was great. Even even if it isn't Paul George, I'm curious. Like, what's right now? They're not a contender. They're not rebuilding. They're firmly stuck in the middle of being a good team with a true all true yeah. all star on their mm -hmm. team. No real second guy, but a good cast of role players. That's a hard place to be unless you mm -hmm. can make a trade for a second star, which you know they have their their full case of picks. I'm pretty sure. So that's possible. Well, besides the ones they sent out for Tyrese, which wasn't a lot because Sabonis was the main part of that trade. I don't know what the next step is, even if it's, if it's not Paul George. So far this season, they should be no next step other than just let's see how far we can take this thing and then make assessments. Not that far, though. Yeah, I, I you, you know, you, yeah, you, you won't know take it that happen. far. We know. We know, but I think you, you want to see how far you can go and then see what yeah. pieces should stick along with Tyrese and Miles Turner, assuming that he's going to be a long-term piece over there, and rock out, rock out from there. I think that's the best option. They can throw a slew of young, good, productive players along with their picks to make that happen in the trade market if Paul George doesn't decide to go ahead and make something happen. But, yeah, I don't think they, they necessarily need to... Ha, ha, be in a rush to do anything. Man, let's get Pascal Siakam in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> let's do let's it. Get a, let's get a Let's do it. Let's get him a second star. I don't care who. Come it on. Is. Anybody. So nice. many. So many of my questions on here are trade related. I'm just like in that mindset right now. Of like, yeah. how are these teams going to improve? Mm. And yeah, man, this is one. Of them. I have a question for you that leads me to my next team. Okay. The Cleveland Cavaliers. Do they trade Donovan Mitchell? Do they start the retool? I'm teed up to y'all. I say yes. Probably not. I, I say yes. I get I get why you say that. Yes. You go, yeah. no, you go ahead and go first. Explain why you say that. Okay. I I think that like for for the for the Cavs, the expectation this year was to take another step forward. And I 
we talked about it earlier. The first scapegoat for a lot of these teams because the money is so big is going to be the coach. So if they, listen, Mobley's out, Gar Garland is out for a lot. JB Biggerstaff is probably out of there by, by the end of this year. And they, they most likely will run it back with their four core players. But it's so clear. Everybody knows that Donovan Mitchell doesn't want to be there. And so I think yeah. that, I think that for Cleveland, like it might get to a point where they maybe not like proactively like shop him, but behind closed no, doors. It's what it is. Yeah, but like behind closed doors, like Mitchell might not come out publicly and say, I want to be traded. But they go behind closed doors, and it's like, listen, I don't want to be here. And they're like, Yeah, we could tell. All right, we'll work something out. And so <laughs> yeah. that that's that's where I think this is headed. And so I it's hard for me to think that Mitchell's gonna be on this team going into next year, especially they, they're lined up to be in the playing race. If they don't win a playoff series for the second straight year, what are you doing? So that's oh, that, that's my thought. Side process. note. Side note. Kevin Durant had 16 assists tonight as we're recording. Career 16? High. Wow. 16 assists. Good job. Man, thanks oh to Tyree Halliburton. <laughs> oh Sun my fans God. That's crazy. But now I feel you, though. Um, I, I had similar thoughts. Like, <laughs> I think it's only going to happen if, you know, like you said, Garland and Evan Mobley are both out for extended periods of time. They might spiral in some losses. Donovan Mitchell might grow increasingly frustrated. I think we know him to be a rather high character guy. So he probably won't have like a falling out publicly with bad body language mm -hmm. and all that. I think that's what it would take for that trade to happen. Like it clearly falling apart chemistry wise. And it's always possible when you have a superstar that for all we know probably doesn't want to be there. And a coach that's probably not long for that team. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's going to happen because I think he's a very high character guy. And I don't see that in the cards for him. Like he's not going to be a crybaby on the court. So I think mm. they probably don't, but it won't be shocking. Yeah, I can agree with you guys. I can agree with you guys. But me personally, I wouldn't want to make a move happen so fast because I'd want to I'd want to run, run it back at least one more time with this group minus J.B. Beckerstaff. Like I said, the, that Turkestan plane, put J.B. Beckerstaff's name on that right there. <laughs> and you on a ticket. Put him in first class over there. Headline, yeah. face of it. Um, but, I'd also yeah, want to give it a chance, this team with another center. And see if mm, we can break really? up the non-shooting combo. And listen, Jared Allen's great, but listen, we know that there's this team was put together with the hopes that the shooting would become less of an issue because Evan Mobley would take strides there. If he's not mm -hmm. going to, and you don't want to get rid of Donovan Mitchell because he's the second best player you've ever had in franchise history, then you make a new different personnel change and you try it with you know one less non-shooter on the court. I'd rather try that next year before giving up on D-Mitch. There's this one Cavs fan typing to you right now, Isaac. You don't understand what Kyrie Irving did for this city. You weren't here during the donations for us during Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, great. That's me. That's me. That's me. Really? <laughs> Do is Donovan Mitchell better than Kyrie Irving? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Kyrie's great, but like, come on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel, like it's a con I feel like it's a conversation. I guess, but listen, there's always going to be the... He played with LeBron. If D. Mitch played with LeBron, they would also win that chip. And yeah, I love Kyrie. Course. Everything he did, he had a fantastic gear, was a perfect player there. That big oh, shot is incredibly valuable. Yeah. As a number one option, come on. Yeah, but if I'm D missed played with Dion Waiters, no, I get it. Uh, I'm being dismissive. Yeah. Then yeah. they're probably getting a number one overall pick too again. So, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah I, I think D is a little bit better as a number one option. I think he's proved that he can handle that workload. Come playoff time, he's had memorable moments that I just think the jury's out with Kyrie. We just know he's not the number one guy on our team. Okay. It's close. It's close. No, we're getting sidetracked. We're getting sidetracked. Yeah. Side yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I think <laughs> my, bad, my, my bad Kyrie fans. I know you hate him all the time for being not the biggest Kyrie fan. I get it. I was once a young Kyrie fan too. He's my favorite player in 2011 as well. <laughs> um, I think I got skipped over. So maybe I'll do two teams in a row. Yeah, yeah you did. Go Let's go. Let's knock out. I have Mo decided these teams and he gave me the worst list of teams possible, y'all. I'm finna knock out like two rebuilding teams, get them over with. <laughs> bet. I got two. Okay, we'll knock out the Wizards and the Bulls together. I don't. I don't. I don't want to talk about them. Y'all got it. I'm staying silent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question for the Wizards: How good can Bilal Koulibaly be? Is he going to be the long-term answer at point guard slash combo guard? I love him. He's going to be really good. I think he has all the tools. Everything we were promised with him defensively, with his length, could potentially be a good finisher as he gets older. All that stuff. He's going to be dope. How good can he be? And I want to see him continue to be empowered as the season goes on. Because right now they're very, you know. Jordan Poole, <laughs> very that heavy, very <laughs> Kyle Kuzma, very uh, Denny Avdija. I want to see Kalabi, I mean, Kulabali, I keep saying his name wrong, continue to get more burned. And I want to, you know, late in the season, we often see young players get more touches than early in the year and like explode. And we kind of like take that hope into next year. 
I want I want the opportunity to get hype for Koulibaly. Hmm. Second, okay. Chicago Bulls. Is Kobe White the franchise point guard? He's been killing it since Zach Levine went out. They're going to trade his ass. He doesn't want to be there. He's being a negative player because he just clearly hates that team. Is Kobe White the answer there? Do you continue to keep him on the team long term as that guard? If you're going towards a rebuild, is he there? If you're going towards retooling and being competent, is he there? Like, they have a big decision to make there with that guy. Solid. Yuck. <laughs> All right. I'm not talking about this. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about this. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about the Wizards. To- I don't care about the Bulls. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, I care about the Bulls. I think Kobe White's good. And I think they can either get a good trade for him for a team that values him long term if they don't, or he might be a very interesting part of their next generation because he's getting the touches that he's he's becoming the player Bulls fans have wanted to be for a while. Yeah. About damn time. It just sucks that it's like not too late, but it's like. We could have needed. We could have really used this back like two years ago when Lonzo. <laughs> Listen, they're, six and, they're six and four in the last ten, and he's a major part of that. He's been incredible. That is true. That is true. Can't hang on him too much. Maybe back he's been to too good because they're winning games, and we need them to lose games so they can make smart decisions and blow it up. That is very true because a couple of weeks ago, for just to add context, is this a couple of weeks ago? I believe maybe it was two weeks ago. Um, someone who brought the Chicago Bulls said that they were out looking for win now talent, win now pieces when this run initially started. And that's very discouraging and disheartening to hear as a Chicago Bulls fan who's just been trapped in a mud of mid over the last few years. Yeah, fuck. I, mean, <laughs> I hope they're not dumb again, but you can't rule it out. It is what it is, man. What's your Back next team, real- Donovan? Yeah, please. My next team is the Charlotte Hornets. And my... Okay, mid on mid, let's go. I have two questions for them. One... No, pick one. Don't Don't cheat. Pick one. Listen, I have two. I have, I have two. two if you want. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> the first one is, who are we trading for? Because you need somebody alongside Lamelo Ball. And two, <laughs> it's all trades. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and two, listen, this is a. It's all trades and it's all coaching, right? Because I think that like when you start looking at big picture NBA stuff, one of the things that is very underrated when you're talking about teams is. What is your identity and what is your direction? Do you know, do you have, do you have a plan for what you're going to do? Because if you don't, you are in a very terrible situation, right? It's one thing if you're bad, but you know that, but you know that you're going to be bad. You know that you're going to do stuff. If you're bad and you're just wandering, that's even worse. So for the, so for the (laughs) Hornets, who are you, who are you trading for? Are you getting somebody alongside LaMelo Ball? And secondly, is Steve Clifford going to be the coach of this team next year? Steve Clifford in two years is 34 and 76 as the head coach. Granted, Damn. LaMelo Ball has been hurt for a lot of that and that 100% affects, you, affects your record and your ability to win games. But like the theme of the show is, coaches get fired fair or not. This is just what happens. Yeah. But they need, they need to figure out, like, listen, LaMelo's our guy. Who are we pairing him with? What direction do we want to go? And start moving in a, in a new direction because... They had they had a little bit of you know hope maybe to be like a playing team or something maybe fight for that and they don't really have that right now so that's what I want to see yeah I get that I think they'd probably tell you that Brandon Miller is the guy and they have yeah. high hopes that he can develop into a star Mark Williams being your big of the future mm-hmm. potentially hopefully I think they'd probably tell you that they're not in a rush there but to your point they have a move looming whether it be for another guy guy or retooling because. P.J. Washington was re-signed as a restricted free agent. The whole league knows he was signed to be traded. On a team-friendly contract, $15 million a year, everybody in the league assumes he's not going to be there long-term. Bridges, his ass is on a one-year contract. Exactly. I would hope he's not in their long-term future. He probably is because they don't give a shit about anything that's not trying to win games, clearly. Is he going to be there long-term? Maybe. If not, that's two four positions you got to figure out long-term. Like, those two guys combined have given them a couple big question marks. Yeah. On top of Rozier and Hayward aging and their, you know, their yeah. health and all that stuff. They have a lot of holes that they have to fix. So let's let's get stuff shaking, right? Let's let's get the ball rolling. So that so that way if LaMelo does get hurt next year, you are not one of the absolute worst teams in the league and you can at least be somewhat competent. Yeah. You know what's interesting? They're what are they right now? They're thirteenth in the league right now. Thirteenth in mm-hmm. the I mean in the conference. Seven and twenty-one. Lamelo's out for a while longer. They could sneakily turn this into a tank year and get one more high pick to complement Lamelo and Brandon Miller, and like have a real core for the first time in there. Rozier is a good trade candidate. Like he Bro, can help some teams. He's good. Rose, and Rozier is genuinely a great player. We've seen him step up 
and he's had plenty of great playoff moments. Now, yes, it was back in like 2018, 2019. A couple, I don't know about plenty. Uh, yeah. But for, for the player that, he, that a lot of people her. expect him. Yeah. <laughs> Ask him. Yeah. Always trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they, can, in my opinion, to what you said, to what you alluded to, Isaac, this should, this could possibly be a taking year. I think it absolutely hold on, hold on, hold should on. be a taking sorry, year. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna cut you off. Should the Magic trade for Terry Rozier? That's a great okay. piece, to be honest with you. Okay, but I don't know if he's like the 100 percent answer, but they don't need the answer, and he could be that contemporary piece. He I'm intrigued. The answer. I'm intrigued. Sorry to or, cut you off. Keep going. I, I had to get that out before I forgot. What were could you he be a Laker? Oh, absolutely. I've, Lakers fans have theorized that for a while. He would make a lot of sense. And PJ Washington as well as a forward who can defend and shoot. I would love a D'Lo, maybe Rui, or probably not Rui, but D'Lo and Picks for you know, the Picks are the main attracting part for Charlotte for mm-hmm. Rozier and PJ Washington. That'd be fantastic as a Lakers fan. Whew, man. T- yeah, that, THT that's our and a pick. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, D'Lo and yeah, the thing they can trade two first round picks. That's a good package for Rozier and PJ Washington. Yeah, exactly. I they the Charlotte Hornets have a lot of players that they could just go ahead and sell off and just commit to the tank and rebuild the shitty identity that they've like been massed over the last yeah. few years. So I think that's no, they, the way to go, honestly. I think it should pop them, bro. If they get another high pick with Brandon Miller, Mark Richards, and Lamella, that's a good starting point. It sucks that. This has to be their tanking year because so far this NBA, this upcoming NBA draft class, it doesn't look the strongest over the last few years. But they got to do what they got to do, and they already have their guy in the middle of the ball. And Brandon Brandon Miller has been hooping uh, so far this season, so they'll be straight. Um, let's talk about real basketball. <laughs> the the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> My biggest question for them: We see how good Carl Anthony Towns has been so far this season. Rudy Gobert is there. He is the second best player of this team. My question is, with how prone to playoff lapses that Carl Anthony Towns is, how good can Anthony Edwards be? Because it doesn't matter. How, like, if your third if your third guy flails off, we've seen it plenty before, like LeBron James in those Cleveland Cavaliers days with Kevin Love. Like, he does. He completely shrinks when the light is the brightest. Cat may do the same thing. But is that a Kevin Love thing now? He's a shrinker. He might be. And if that that's what it is, it's okay. Because if your guy is that guy, then it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Okay, so you're you're asking, is Anthony Edwards good enough to carry the workload even if Cat fails again? Yes, this season specifically. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yes. Hmm. Cool. Short answer. <laughs> I, think, I, I think that Ant could probably be good enough for the archetype of team they are. They're going to be heavy defense. Like we know they're first in the league. Rudy Gobert is shooting for DPOI. It's happening. That's going to be the bedrock of this team. And for the championship teams that we've seen in recent years do that and have that be their identity, they're all like the 12th best offense or so. That's all they have to be. So the question is, can Anthony Edwards pick up more of a load in the playoffs and keep them as a 12th best offense in the league? Yeah, I think so. Anthony Edwards, are you him? Just let, let me know, <laughs> right? Let, let me know. I just I just need to see. Outside of eight, are there any real questions that you guys have about the team? I feel pretty confident in knowing who they are, honestly. I guess the biggest question will be, like, what version of Cat we're getting. I'm pretty mm-hmm. confident what Ant will be, given off of last year's playoff run, what we've seen from him this year. I don't have any worries about him come playoff time. I have zero worries about Rudy Gobert. We saw him in the playoffs, what he saw him do in previous runs, where he had to defend everybody because he had no perimeter defenders, and he was left out to dry to try to defend everything. Not going to be an issue because they have elite perimeter defenders on this team. The only question mark is obviously Carl Anthony Towns. We're seeing the best version of him right now with this core. Are we going to see that in the playoffs? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, nobody knows, right? You can't even predict it. You just got to, time will tell, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Unpredictable. But regardless of what the, what it is, T-Bulls fans should be so fucking proud of themselves. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be good. I, I, I'm i confident they're going to have a good playoff run. I don't really have any doubts about them right now. Yeah, exactly. I can agree to that. I can agree to that. They're big. They Next have team. The easy the best three big man rotation in the entire <laughs> NBA. <laughs> but Next team, let's get it popping. I have a spicy one. Next team, the Dallas Mavericks. My Ooh. biggest question mark, not even a question mark, it's not a question mark at all. My biggest question I'm throwing out into the ether is Luka Doncic the best player in the NBA? <laughs> <laughs> Are we just there? Is he taking the crown this year? Is he the guy Bro. right now? Seeing him give the Dallas, give the Phoenix Suns 50 
and eviscerate them on both ends of the court is Dude. the craziest shit ever. That was, is it surprising? No. <laughs> that was one of the best individual games in the regular season I've ever fucking seen. No exaggeration. They doubled his ass on every single possession in the second half. Damn near. Not, no, it's exaggeration because you can't every play. But every time yeah. they could, they threw two bodies. And I've n- never seen somebody pick apart a defense with that much precision as a scorer and a passer in one game. You know, there's those vintage games of James Harden where we saw him have like 60 point triple doubles. And like we talk about how we became like numb to it. That's yeah. what he just did. It was the same thing. And we know James Harden is that type of guy. Just playoffs never held up. Luca does hold up in the playoffs and gets better. I think right now he's might be peaking the same place that peak James Harden did. And if peak James Harden was peak James Harden in the playoffs, we would have been talking about him as best player in the league too, side by side with LeBron. I think we might be there with Luka Doncic. And I know we did the MVP episode of the stream a couple weeks ago, and I didn't have him in my MVP ballot. Changed my mind. This <laughs> wrong over he. Right now, Joel Embiid's the favorite to win the MVP because of team success mostly. They both been incredible. Luca's right there. If this team continues to go on a run and win games, and if the 76ers slip even a little bit, this is his year to win the MVP if that happens. <laughs> man, oh man. I couldn't be even more wrong with my assessment about the Dallas Mavericks because Luka Doncic is just literally, he might, with the way he's been playing, I, I cannot be mad if you crown him as the best player in the NBA. He's averaging no, like listen. 33 and 9 and 8 this season so far. <laughs> leading them insane. almost in every single statistical category. And like, so the best player in the world title honestly just goes to whichever the top four or five guys won the title last. That's how this conversation goes. It's lazy. But, like, take aside all that. Let's not even think about team success. Jokic and Giannis are the two best players in the world. And Embiid's right behind them, however you feel about them. Breakly season, playoffs, difference. We'll see. It, Luka's played himself into that caliber, I think. I think, you know, last week we did the best players in the world. Right now, top 30. I put Curry ahead of him. Maybe it's overreaction to Christmas Day. I think I was wrong. I think Luca should be top four at least. Right now, it's safe to say that you surpassed him. Donovan, you've been real quiet. What are you thinking? Yeah. Man, it's tough. This is this is a <laughs> conversation that I've been trying to hold off on for a minute. Just it's time, because, bro. I know. It, it is time. Just because, like, like you said, the best player in the world conversation, you have to get to the finals, right? I think you, you have to get there. You have to you have to win a title gen generally. But man, this guy's unstoppable. This this guy this f- guy's unstoppable. And for somebody who has the supporting cast around him, right? And obviously, like Kyrie's not a scrub, but you look at the rest of that team, and it's like Grant Williams. He's been hurt too. Yeah, but you know, like Grant Williams, fine NBA player. Tim Hardaway Jr. Okay, right? All the all these guys, and they are the last time I checked, if I'm not mistaken, they were in the in, they were in the top six out of the playing race. They Fit are. Seat. Fifth? Fifth, yep, eighteen and twelve. Yeah, that. So, so yeah, these. Man, no, nah, man. I, I think, I think that's a very fair question. And if we went into this off season, even if they don't win a championship, and we want to say that Luca's the best player in the NBA, I think it would be right. And I, I don't think yeah. that I can fault anybody for saying that because just on a nightly basis, what are you gonna throw at him to stop him? Because. He can score at all three levels. He makes some of the crazy. It seems like every single night we're seeing just the craziest pass that we've ever seen. I mean, he's throwing Magic Johnson level. He he's behind the yes. back, yes, <laughs> like behind the back, no look, skip passes. And you're just like, what? What is happening right now? Like, bro, how, how's he seeing it? It's it's mind boggling how good he is. So, yeah, I, uh, it's wild. I have a tweet from I think 2019 or maybe 2020, one of his first few years in the league. Where I said, already it was year two or three of Luca. I said he might be the best pick and roll ball handler I've ever seen in my life, NBA history type <laughs> shit. I said that in his second or third year when he first became like a twenty-eight point per game, nine assist type of scorer, and like he made superstar leap All NBA year two. I said that in twenty nineteen. He's so much better now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at it. Nikhil pulled it up. I said this is December second, twenty nineteen. I've been watching Mavs games all week, and man. I feel safe saying Luca is one of, if not the greatest pick and roll ball handlers I've ever seen play. I felt that way back then. And he's so much better and unstoppable now. Like, he's as close as we've seen to an offensive player be as perfect as LeBron in terms of being a playmaker and a high volume scorer. Truly unstoppable. And I don't think there's huh. any hyperbole you can say that's like dick eating. Like, there's no way to exaggerate Bro, this. 
we've seen this man. One of the biggest holes that people it. put in punch into his game was like how ball dominant he was. And of course, that's still who he is at the end of the day. But he's shown more versatility this year than ever when it comes to being willing to be off ball last night or not last night, but a couple nights ago on Christmas night, we saw this man come off, I believe, pin down screens from maybe Derek Lively, or Grant, Grant Williams or something like that. And he went to the, I believe, top left, top left wing and he banged a three from dumb deep. That was like curry like, dude, that is ridiculous. And honestly, the only way that you can stop someone like Luka Doncic is that you send someone pre-game to beat his ass in the locker room. <laughs> That's your only hope. Take a bat, knock his knees out. <laughs> Tell the ball boy, do what they did to Victor Wembanyama. Yo, step on her. Be under this dude's. Be under this dude's fucking foot feet during before the layup, bro. Let him roll his ankle. That's the only way. <laughs> Bro, the only way to stop this man is to send Tony Soprano with a crow bat. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> with a crowbar. That's hilarious. That's funny. Like, I saw a tweet that was like, I'm tired of pretending he's not the best motherfucker since Braun. And it might be true. Like, it, co- it comes down to with Jokic, we knew for a few years that he was that guy. You just needed the team success for people to be willing to admit that this seven foot Euro is the best guy in the con- in the world. And we might be at that point with him where we're just waiting for him to finally win one. And it's inevitable. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe, and with with what you just said, maybe we value team success a little bit too high because we do, we do. Oh yeah, honestly, bro, like that argument is very valid, and it's 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 lazy as fuck. But I mean, it's the truth, right? Like, there's a lot of good players. At some point, you gotta be the one to get the ring when there's like four all time greats in the league right now in their primes. Yeah. The three bigs plus him, plus yeah. the older guys. But like, yeah, exactly. It's a respect it's factor tough. thing. Yeah, he has the listen. He has the worst team of those four teams we mentioned. Like, you know, the three bigs being Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid plus him. If those are top four players right now in their primes, he has the worst team. So you can't really fault him for not winning if he doesn't get it. But if you're going to steal the best player in the world title from three MVPs in the primes, that's the type of shit you got to do. Yeah. 100%. 100%. All right. I want to talk Good about another Texas grief. team real quick. I want okay. to talk, talk about the Houston Rockets. And my question okay. for them is, is Jalen Green going to be on this team in two years? <laughs> is he going to be in the NBA in two years? <laughs> he'll, he'll be he'll be in the league, but is he going to be on the Rockets? Because Jalen Green is on sucks. A, he's on a downslide. He's having a terrible month right now. Listen, he scored twenty three points tonight against the Suns. Eight of twenty shooting, right? Forty percent from the field. This is really just kind of what he does. The two games before this against the Indiana Pacers, who we all know don't play any defense. Five points, two of seven shooting. He's getting benched in the fourth quarter. He he is out here having a terrible month. I want to read you guys his splits <laughs> for December. In December, Let's go. in December, he's averaging in 28 minutes a night. 13 points, four rebounds, three assists on 45% true shooting. This guy is not efficient. He is not in... The, he doesn't look like he's in the future of the Houston Rockets. He doesn't look like the star that we that some people thought he had. Some people uh, thought thought hmm. that he could be, and he's looking you. like the I know, <laughs> and he and he's looking like the poster child for why G League Ignite is a fake team, and it's just, <laughs> it sucks. So for the Rockets, I I really think that it's time for them to figure out where they want to go with Jalen Green because he is a very critical you know draft piece. And you got to figure out wh- what do you want to do with him. So that's the question. Yeah. Listen, I, I follow a lot of Rockets Twitter because I used to write for a Rockets publication. So I'm pretty like weirdly deep into Rockets Twitter bes- beside, besides not being a fan. Like it's kind of strange. I've seen a lot of this discourse. People really want to bench him. The problem is he is a very low confidence player. I think is the general takeaway that he's very prone to cold streaks, as you can see. And it's a tricky thing because if you bench him, that can ruin his confidence even more and send him spiraling. You can put him into the second unit and see if maybe he'll be a little better by taking those offensive workload with less pressure instead of just ruining what they got going with the starters. But then again, maybe you're just like tanking second unit uh, teams by, you know, giving them to him when he doesn't really deserve that type of role right now. You can't send him to the G League. That'll really destroy the confidence. It's, you know, you'll look really bad as an organization saying you're number two pick to the G League. It's a really tough spot because there's no no new role that makes total sense. There's no, there's no easy answer here. You know you're down bad as an NBA player when 
and another player's mom is consoling you on Twitter and saying, <laughs> keep your head up, bud. You'll be all right. <laughs> Things, you Tori Eason? Yeah, Tori Eason's mom went ahead and tweeted about Jalen Green and, and took a picture of, I believe, Alfred Sengun's hand over Jalen Green. He just, Jalen just looked so out of it. He looked like his dreams and hopes just got shot, <laughs> blown into smithereens. And it has. I mean, it shows that all of Jalen Green's flaws and a lot of people's assessments, assessments of him coming into the draft was, A, like, of course, like, when it comes to his handle, it's not the tightest. And in order to be a elite scorer or upper echelon scorer, at least in the NBA, you need that's like a must have non-negotiable. And if you're not going to have a great handle, you need to absolutely be a knockdown shooter, similar to the Clay Thompson that's types. Problem. And obviously he's not that either. So when if you have the combination of not having the best handle in the world and not being able to navigate and choose your spots and your shot is also iffy, you're cooked. Yeah, that's the problem. He's basically a spot-up shooter right now in this team with Fred Van Vliet and Sangoon kind of being the cores of the offense usage-wise. And he's just not a good three-point shooter. Like, we all thought he could be. He's just not. Like, that's not who he is. He's never shot above 35% from three from any part of the three-point line. Mm. Corners above the break, elbows, none of it. Never shot above 35% from a single spot. Not who he is. Never shot above average at the rim. Part of that is because he has no threat as a three-point shooter. Never shot above average from mid-range. There's just no area of the core he's efficient right now. Not a defensive impactor. Not a good passer. Like, there's no redeeming That's qualities right now. His main, the main lure to him as a player is his ability to be a high, to be an elite level scorer. And he can't do that. And the second that you can't do what you are supposed to be the best at, your value is just shot and you have to find, to you have floor. to fight for your life in the NBA pretty much. And just fucking play defense. Lock in on something. Make something crown something as your own and in this case in this scenario right now we, we've seen literally he got his chain snatched by Ime Udoka, Afrin Sengun, Dylan yeah. Brooks, Fred Van Vliet and this is no longer his team this is no longer his city and he's like in the he's in, he's in the back seat very back he seat. has he has one thing that he can do to try and revive his career and he's gonna have to go album mode he's gonna have to cut his hair right you know <laughs> You know, right? Somebody who has big hair, you shave it down, right? You get yourself a one or a two. Listen, that's when I know that you're serious. If you can do that, I've done that several times. Kyrie's exactly, done that multiple times. And every time he comes back dropping forty, listen, Jalen Green, Jalen Green, go to the barber shop, and I promise you, you're averaging twenty five, right? Do, do what needs to be done, please. Yep. I I know another guy I tweeted about yesterday where. I made a joke about it with like a meme where I was like, it was a picture that I said, Jalen Green watching all the other young players in the league get better. <laughs> I and it was like some meme. I said, like, I don't want to do it or something like that. Yeah. Sick. And I was joking. I was just getting, uh, just roasting him a little bit. But that is what it feels like. Where like all of his peers are making leaps. Tyrese Max is a star now. You know, some Cade's in hell. But everybody else is like continuing to make leaps, getting better. All the people he was compared to. Anthony Simons is popping off. Tyler Hero is getting better and better. And he's just not at all. Yeah. And that's so discouraging as a Rockets <laughs> fan, I'm sure. Yeah. I, to be sorry, honest. Sorry, I don't want any part of this. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that's hilarious, bro. To be honest with you, I think this should be more a so like this, this is an even bigger question for like NBA scouts and people in player development, they need to snuff out what a player's true strengths are and stuff like that before you draft someone so high and place these, bring upon these expectations. As much shit that we're given Jalen Green, you used to give a lot of shit to, to the Houston Rockets um, <laughs> and their organization for like putting him in this position of being the number two overall pick and not, not like meeting those standards or helping him or hold his hand to make sure, you know, that he's in those strides and in those reps and so they could have Evan Mobley. Yeah. I mean, look, in his in his defense, right? In his defense, it probably is hard playing real basketball for the first time in what four years? Because even his first his first few years in, in Houston, you got Steven Silas, you're not playing real basketball, right? Like we all know that that was a clown show. <laughs> and then in the G League Ignite, that's just that's yeah. a whole bunch, that's a whole bunch of guys playing to try and get on. So you're still not playing like championship basketball. So it probably is a very big like culture shock for him so like next year if he still comes out and he can't adjust then we'll see but that's something this offseason that the rockets really need to like address and just start having those conversations feels like yep. AAU next culture 
Hold yeah. on, real quick. It feels like AU culture is like catching up and solely biting every NBA team's ass because guys like Jalen Green is like the poster boy of just like yep. super fire TikTok edits and like insane highlights of him dunking <laughs> and all that. But outside of that, the second we asked you to like play real basketball and play team basketball, you're doing nothing but leading us to a top pick in the next upcoming <laughs> NBA draft. And if you want that, if you want that to happen, Jalen Green is probably your guy for that. If you want to but play yeah. for Isaiah Collier, there you go, Jalen Green. <laughs> That's Make gross. <laughs> That's right, gross. Man. What's your next but, team, Mo? Let's yeah. start flying through these. We're, we're taking a long time. We're just going to be a long right. pod. Get ready for Real three quick. hours on your screen. Let's go. So my next team is the Golden State Warriors. Can Draymond Green stop hurting people? <laughs> okay. Can Steve Kerr play Moses Moody a little bit more? Because the other night he just played eight minutes, and we all thought right when they moved – Andrew Wiggins to the bench that he would get more burn hasn't happened or happened, but actually just for a little bit. And then also, but you know who has got more burn? Brandon Pajemski. He's fantastic. Shout yeah, out. He's I better know. than Moses Moody already. Yeah, I know it. And it sucks to see, it sucks to see. But someone that I'm actually excited to see get more burn is uh, Trace Jackson Davis, mm-hmm. uh, because I've watched him play. A few, uh, I watched him play in person. He's actually a great player, and I think that flex he might be he might be the jolt. <laughs> and athleticism and size that they've been looking for all these years. Facts. I uh, th- listen. They're six and four in the last ten. They've gotten better since Draymond Green went out. I guess the question I have is: Is he going to come and ruin that? Can they maintain this identity they have, where they're playing pods more? I think uh, they're playing Kaminga more. I think he's been answer up a little bit. Like you said, Tracy's been fantastic. He's aver- actually I saw he's averaging more dunks per minute than prime DeAndre Jordan and prime Gobert, which is crazy. So they're <laughs> just like. You know, just uh, what's the word? Um, dunk merchants. So, <laughs> yeah. if you're talking about knee athleticism and you got a new dunk merchant, then that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys yeah. think Draymond Green can play into this? Maybe. I I like what I've. I think. Listen, we all have questions. My question would be Steve Kerr related, and can you step up and start trying to control Draymond Green? And he <laughs> and he has tried. Like I think that the comments that he's made after Draymond's sus- suspension about you know, Draymond controlling himself. That's probably as stern as we've ever heard Steve Kerr talk about Draymond and the most we've ever heard him reprimand Draymond for the stuff that he's done. And so if that can, if that attitude can stay up and say like, listen, you can't hit somebody every three weeks. That's unacceptable. <laughs> then maybe we can get somewhere with the Warriors now that they actually have some accountability on Draymond's end. So I, I think that that is the... That would be the defining measure of how how much would they actually say, no, Draymond, you can't be violent. You have to play basketball. <laughs> okay, let's get serious. Not, not that violent, but you I have mean, to. I like, mean, listen, in a, in a three-week span, he he put Rudy Gobert in a yeah. chokehold, and he, and he punched <laughs> Yusuf Nurkic in the face. Like, it is yeah. kind of violent. You're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, another thing I guess we got to pay attention to, because we've been the first ones to shit on him. Clay Thompson's been good. He had a stinker in his last game against the Nuggets on Christmas. He had nine points, three for 12 in the field. But mm. before that, in the six games prior, averaging 26 points per game on very good efficiency on a 50% from three and 52% from the field for a six-game stretch. It's pretty good. <laughs> if he can play like that, they're going to be a good team. Can he keep that up is my question. Is is this Clay Thompson finding form for the year and he's going to be back to being like 22 points per game or whatever it may be? Is it just going to be a you know a flash in the pan cuz you can't shoot 50% from 3 for the whole year. I don't know. I hope he's back and we're seeing better things from him going forward, but that's going to be a big swing factor. I think it's more of the latter. I I cuz even last year we kind of went through this where Clay was bad and then he had stretches where he was really good and then we get to the playoffs and he was absolutely like down the stretch he was just he was terrible and there was nobody yeah. there was nobody yeah. on the Warriors who could help Steph Curry offensively. So I I need Clay Thompson to prove to me again that he can be consistent more than six games. Um, off, yeah, consistency is the thing. Yeah. Every time a star gets washed, the first thing that goes is the consistency. They always have games where they can show you they can do it, and you're like, whoa. Exactly. Maybe John Wall should yeah. be getting more minutes for the Houston Rockets, but then you see the next game, and it goes. Like we saw him in Christmas, three for 12 from the field. Like, Yeah. We'll see. I'm not writing him off. It wouldn't be shocking if he can hit threes at a high rate again and be back to 20 points per game score efficiently. Like I said, like you said, that consistency is hard to do consistently when you're getting older. 100%. 100%. Is it my turn for next team? Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's, again, 
Mo gave me terrible teams. We're going to fly through two <laughs> more right now. We're going to fly through these motherfuckers. Utah Jazz, will they trade Lowry Markman? What's the direction as a team? That's really the only thing interesting about them right now. They're stuck in limbo where they're kind of starting to rebuild, but not fully committing to it. There's been rumors that they're maybe willing to trade Lowry if the package is right and really go full rebuild. My question is, are they going to? If they do, I'm interested because Lowry can swing a lot of teams and swing the championship race. If they don't, they're tanking for another high pick to pair Keontae George going forward and just kind of, I don't know, early stages of rebuild, not that interesting. Good question. <laughs> Great. Next <Yeah>. team. <laughs> another one, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. Same thing. What the fuck is their long-term goal? <laughs> they owe a lot of picks out the door for the trades they made in the KD era. They got a lot of picks back for trading KD. Right now, they just have a lot of good role players, and they're constantly in the rumors for trading for the next star that becomes available. Maybe that's Donovan Mitchell. Maybe that's so-and-so, whoever may be coming after him. I don't know. If they're not, are they just going to wait and do that and just be okay-ish for a while? That's my question is, what do they want to do with their team? What's the What's the goal here? This this is the goal. This is what Josiah said he wanted. He said he wanted a team who could win, you know, competitive. <laughs> for, you know, 42, 44 games, be competitive, and just have fun. That's exactly where they are. So shout out to Josiah. You have exactly what you want. Great. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> My question is, is this all they want? I, I don't even know where to go from now. Are they gonna trade Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney Smith, and these interesting role players? If that's what they want, I guess not. I guess they'll just be exactly. good. Who knows? Who knows? Enjoy the moment, right? It's not it's not a, a circus show anymore. So we just got to exactly. let them be normal. Great. Another yeah, one. They're... Listen, Mo gave me a bunch of these teams. Next one. <laughs> Toronto Raptors. What do they want to do? OG Anobi <laughs> and Pascal Siakam are looming free agents. They've been the biggest storylines of this team going forward. That's going to continue. What are they going to do with these two guys that are looming free agents? One of them is probably going to walk, maybe both. Do they decide to trade them and get some assets around Scotty Barnes? You're trading them at the lowest value with only one year left. Is what it is. You waited too long. Are you going to pull that trigger or are you going to play for the play in race and try to continue this weird core? It's a great Shout question. Out. No one knows who you've been asking out. the same shit about them. Uh, now let's listeners. talk about real teams. I'm going to I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gift you Donovan. Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> for audio listeners, Donovan just put up two thumbs up. No words. Listen, we talk yeah. about this all the time with the Raptors. We've we been do. talking I'm about it for it, years. Can you trade it's somebody? Masai Ujiri, can you get off of your high horse? Like, it's just free it's Scotty same, Barnes. It's the same stuff over and over. So yeah, listen, until you do something, we don't care. We don't care. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we're gonna fly through you. Sorry, Raptors fans. It, it is what it is. I gave right. love last week by putting Scotty Barnes top 30. That's it. Don't ask anything else for me for the next two months. <laughs> don't don't ask for anything. I'm done with you. <laughs> don't ask for anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk about real next? basketball now. Um, I'm gonna gift you this this team, Isaac. Now that I did you dirty, the Oklahoma City Thunder. We all can assume what's your biggest question for them. It's probably gonna be Larry Marketing. But can I just intrigue your mind? Um, in okay. terms of a possible reunion happening between OKC and Kevin Durant. Oh, <laughs> is this off the heels of that report that KD's mad that he has no help in Phoenix? Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think KD's going anywhere. I think it would be career suicide, reputation wise, for him to request a trade out of the Phoenix Suns. His career's in the his his reputation's in the fucking garbage can. Who cares about that right now? Yeah. We need to rack Listen, up. Say that. We're gonna get to the Phoenix Suns, and we have some words for a recent story they had. We'll get to them. <laughs> but if you're asking me, am I interested in them making a trade for a wing, perhaps somebody who's KD Light named Larry Markkinen? Then yes. Katie like very Martin. interesting. That's such a nasty thing to say. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I get what you a mean. Big guy, a big guy that can shoot and play on the wing a little bit. Katie like. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. All right. Listen. Is that I, well, my biggest question mark is what the fuck are they going to do about Josh Giddy? Not the off the court stuff, but like he's really ruining their offense. And there's a lot of games where he's not closing them. Yeah. I think that they're trying to play halfway right now, where they still start him and try to make it work, but they're letting Isaiah Joe close when it's not working so they can play both worlds and not completely ruin their team. But I don't see a world where it gets better, even on the court. I think he probably has to go. Yeah. It's just such an awkward fit. It's just such an awkward fit, man. And I agree with you. It's just a waiting game, and it's the elephant in, it's, it's the elephant in the room. Before the, of course, like damning rumors that happened with him in his personal life or whatever, people were already on his case about his long-term vision, and we alluded to him being the odd man out. But now it's just a waiting game. We're just they're just waiting for the right trade piece to 
be available is what it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. My other question mark, where is this investigation? I want to know the findings of the oh my league gosh. so I know how to feel about Joshua Giddy. Like, is it time to hate him or not? Hurry up, NBA. <laughs> is it time to hate him or not? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to fire off the slander. Just finish the investigation. Let me know. Nah, man. Do, <laughs> due diligence. <laughs> do, do diligence. I'm ready to commit a whole episode. Come on. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Calm down. Please. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. I'm tired Re, of it. Relax. No relax. <laughs> All right. Listen, we mentioned, I, I, I'm going to take this as a segue to get away from this conversation. <laughs> it's fine. We can talk about it. It's fine. We're going to talk about the Phoenix Suns and Kevin Durant because that's, that's one Hell of my yeah. teams. Perfect. And my original question was Kevin Durant focused, but now I have another question. And this it's not necessarily basketball focused, but it is Phoenix Sun focused. Let's go. Are Suns fans okay? Right? Because <laughs> they listen, this this week, right, pictures came out of uh, and screenshots came out of like Suns Suns Reddit, and everybody's just hating on Kevin Durant and blaming all of their problems on KD. And it's like, do you forget where you came from? Do you forget, <laughs> do you forget that for the last eight years, or I you know pre bubble, for seven of the eight years pre bubble, you guys were under five hundred, and for about six of them, you guys won twenty five games or less. How dare you? Who do you think you you are to <laughs> to call out Kevin Durant and to put all the problems on him? Right, your team. I understand you guys are upset that you guys are you know fighting to be in the play in. Your anger is misdirected, and I need you guys to just answer the question: Are you okay? What's wrong? Yeah, man. Right. Can you pull up these tweets? Let's let's click on these screenshots to get a full screen. Let's. I'll read these out loud to the audio listeners. And it's like really Donovan funny. Said, real, real, real quick, before before you get into it, it's real funny because out of these out of these three screenshots, two of them are from the same person, Debo twenty eight. He <laughs> or they are very very upset. <laughs> nice. I appreciate the He's ambiguous pronouns. You know. What I'm um, saying. <laughs> yeah. So this is a tweet that says, the Sun subreddit has completely turned on Kevin Durant. First post, I genuinely don't understand why anyone feels like the Suns fans should have any positive feelings towards KD whatsoever. Fuck this vulture. Came and blew up a very good team one year removed from the NBA Finals so he can fulfill his insecurities of never having accomplished anything without hopping onto a proven championship team pre and post him. This is worse than the fate of Marion, Nash, Amari years because this roster was young and could have competed for 10 years. Now it's a bunch of recycled garbage and three hero ball all-stars. Damn! That's just one of three posts. Let's keep going. Next slide. Next one says, (laughs) I was against the trade, but took the, at least we have KD, positive mentality for the longest time. I was defensive of this team for much of the season so far, but he's lost me. They've lost me. Kevin Durant is such a good player, but I'm losing my love for basketball. I don't want to admit it. I don't want to admit it, but maybe the Nets fans were right. Vogel needs to go. If things don't improve by the trade deadline, maybe Durant needs to go too. <laughs> Next Losing one. Losing your two love for basketball. <laughs> There's one more. Don't worry. Go outside. <laughs> this reads to me like daddy doesn't want us anymore. KD is a clown. Let's recap. One, failed at playing Nets fantasy GM super team builder to fulfill his insecurities from riding GSW's coattails. Two, forced his way to a 65 win team by demanding a trade to come here over and over. Three, lost. <laughs> Four, <laughs> gutted roster in offseason and playing fantasy GM with Booker. Five, lost more. <laughs> Damn. Six, pouting now that they continue to lose. Seven, entire team turning on each other and crying in media. Eight, Fans hate this team and giving guys we traded KD for emotional standing ovations. <laughs> Nine question marks. And all this is based off of Kevin Durant saying that, <laughs> or a report coming out saying that Kevin Durant is frustrated, like any normal player who's been on the losing side of things as, as of late. In fact, and KD didn't even say shit. It was a report that there's looming frustration in the locker room about him. He didn't even do anything. Maybe it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. This is Those, hilarious. That is insane Reddit post. I can't believe I just read. I'm losing my love for basketball. G- be a man. Bro. Shut up. <laughs> Go talk to your wife and kids. What do you mean you're losing Shut your love up. for basketball? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It rocks. You Find a hobby. <laughs> Holy shit. KD and the Sun successes. You're all. <laughs> oh fuck <sighs> off. That's hilarious. Yeah, Kay- he's in the slums. Listen. There is something to be said about KD reaping what he sowed. If he is frustrated, that's life when you... What he said about playing fantasy GM is true. 
He's made a lot of pushes to make moves. We know KD to be – listen, KD has a podcast. We've heard at length him talk about <laughs> basketball and what he values. And what he values is <laughs> – that boy nice basketball. He wanted Bradley Beal so they got three of those guys and recreate what they had in Brooklyn, having three <laughs> guys. It's not working again. None of us are that shocked. We all thought they'd be good, but we saw that right on the wall. There may be a worst-case scenario where these injury-prone guys are hurt or if the team doesn't gel for whatever reasons. you got a lot of minimum contracts. It might not work. We're seeing the worst-case scenario play out. You can't be yeah. mad or you reap what you sowed. But this guy acting like KD is just like the villain, like he made these decisions, like he traded for himself. Shut up. And yeah. also, on top of that, do you forget the team that KD came to? That was a team that got blown out for a second straight year in a game in a in a game seven or in an elimination game and they the infamous meme of chris paul hitting a three to cut the lead down to 42 that came from that team prior like that team wasn't gonna win another finals right they they, they weren't gonna get to another finals you had to make uh you had to make another trade because one your number one overall draft pick from five years ago, nobody liked him. And then your coach, <laughs> and, then, and then your coach who came in to like change the culture, nobody liked him either. So, and then your point guard on top of that, he was old and nobody liked him either. So the vibes were <laughs> terrible and you had to go get somebody else. This is again what I'm saying. Understand where you came from. Like Kevin Durant, go, go, Kevin Durant going to your team made you a better team and it made you. A, a finals contender for more years than you were actually going to be if you kept the same roster together. So like, boo-hoo, you upgraded from Mikael Bridges to Kevin Durant. Be happy. Be happy. Like, come on. This 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 is ridiculous. This is actually And what's wild. kicking the Phoenix Suns fans' ass right now is them using hindsight like a motherfucker in a 100%. conversation that needs conversation that needs context. Like, Mikael Bridges probably wouldn't be the player that he is today. 20 point per game score that he is today unless he found himself in an entirely new situation so you're right you guys are in your bag with this one the only thing that will warrant this type of reaction from these phoenix suns fans is if katie literally requested a trade and was like 15 and 15 or whatever it was i'm out this bitch <laughs> other than that you're just overreacting yeah yeah man listen this, this might just be a couple upset fans that don't represent the fan base as a whole but it's if funny. this is the general tone of fan base as a whole, shut up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the next team, Donovan? I mean, All bro. right. So I got three more teams left. I can burn through one of them real quick. The oh. Hawks, can they get assets for DeJounte Murray? The other night we've seen them do something that okay. hasn't been done since 2021. Andre Drummond scored 24 points in an NBA game before. It's over for us. <laughs> it's so <laughs> over for us. Hold on, hold that on. Makes, it's not just that. He had 24 points. He also had 25 rebounds. That's Andre Drummond type stuff. Yeah, that's not the no, most shocking. 24, 25? That that's what? Andre Drummond. Listen, that's greatest rebounder wilt? of all time. Is he wilt? What the fuck? He's, He's the greatest rebounder sometimes. of all time. He be doing that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, he, is, sometimes in 2018. This is not sometimes. Listen, Bro. DeAndre Jordan had a, a, a throwback game this year too. Listen, these guys are still NBA players. He can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they Anyways. should trade DeJounte. I feel very yeah. validated. From the jump, I've been saying the deal didn't make sense. It was a bad combination. Yeah. And I got yelled at by Hawks fans. Suck it. You yeah. got yelled at for the right reasons, I would say, but also for the wrong reasons, I would say also. Because the team as a whole, the team construction as a whole is not the greatest. And DeJounte is only at the forefront of these trade talks because he's on such a team valuable contract and he's actually playing good basketball as an individual. I don't so, want to hear shit about any good reasons, bad reasons. It never made sense to pair <laughs> a ball dominant point guard with your ball dominant point guard. Never that's made why sense seconds. Yeah, and that's why Travis Schlenk left this dusty ass organization the second that we <laughs> decided that we were going to go ahead and make. <laughs> what you just call him? Dusty. What'd you say? I thought I said oh, he dusty. left this dusty oh. ass organization. Yeah. What did you like said musty. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Dusty, musty, whatever you want to call it, they are that. This is this is atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, man. I'm looking at the tweet right now that says Andre Drummond is the DeMar DeRozan's of centers mid. Tweeted that in 2020. <laughs> what was he cooking? <laughs> yeah, what was it? How was even with DeMar? What How team was DeMar? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So disrespectful. I'm so sorry, DeMar. But anyways, uh, more interesting team that we can talk about. This is one of my last two teams. The Memphis Grizzlies. 
John okay. Moran is back. My biggest question to y'all and to them is, can they make a serious playoff push? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. They are four and Listen, since the four and since he's been back. He he has been fantastic. The the only thing that is on my mind is, are people going to be babies every time that he does any type of celebration or dance or has any type of fun from here on out? But outside of that, the basketball is fine. They're gonna they're gonna be good. They're gonna be fine. <laughs> oh my That's God. it. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, can you describe that dance you were doing just now? Yes. Now people were up clutching their pearls. Chandler Parsons. Did you see Chandler Parsons? One, he was talking, clutching his pearls about John Morant doing his little gun celebration, which doesn't fucking matter. Did you yeah. see what he said about Team Morant? No. Yeah. There's a video that the Grizzlies posted of Team Morant dancing during a timeout where there's music playing. He was just up dancing, doing his thing, totally harmless. And Chandler Parsons quoted it and said, unbelievable. <laughs> He's Chandler thinking Parsons. so much about his character right now with those simple You make words. whatever assumptions you make from that. I know what I think that's, that means. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the one to say it, but... Uh, He's on watch! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what I'll say. He's on watch right now. Yeah, not my accusation to make, but... Uh. <laughs> Anyways, yes. I, I was watching this game. We're showing the highlights for right now of the Grizzlies versus the Pelicans. The Pelicans were up by, I think, 10 in the fourth quarter. And I was watching it and I was like, this lead isn't fucking safe. John Morant's out there. The Pelicans are the Pelicans. Sure as shit, I got sent to OT and the Pelicans ended up losing the game in disastrous fashion by committing a lot of stupid fouls at the end of the game to allow the Grizzlies to win it with two free throws at the end. And this team kind of just looks like how they looked in previous years to me now. It kind of just looks like they're back, honestly. Yeah. Since John Morant's been back, they have a uh, they've had a 117 offensive rating with him on the court, which puts them in the top 10 around teams like the Sacramento Kings uh, mm -hmm. and all that. And their defense, as we said a couple episodes ago, has been just as elite as it's always been. They're top seven. So with that recipe, they're literally quite literally going to be back 20, 30 games from now. Yeah, they they're fine. They're fine, and I think well, this, they're five games out of ten seed. Though it's a lot. It's a big big hole to come out of. I mean, but who's who's ahead of them though? Well, listen, that's interesting. The Jazz are ahead of them. They'll pass the Jazz up. They're, they're currently two games behind the Jazz. Get them out. Of After that, we have Suns, Warriors, Lakers, Rockets, Pelicans, and the I'm, Suns are eleven seed. So two of those teams have to fall out. If we're, the Suns are probably going to make the playoffs, I assume the playing team. Sorry, Do you Rockets. Think the Warriors are going to fall out. Maybe. Maybe I don't. I don't know. We need to see some consistency from them. The Rockets. Okay. I just need to see a little bit more. But I mean, listen, these guys, the Grizzlies, man, John Moran is. Give. I don't even care if he's not playing enough. Give him the MVP. Like it's very clear. <laughs> it's very <laughs> clear, right? Like this is, this is. It's just so interesting, the construction of basketball teams of how John Moran can come in and now. Everything feels fine. Like they like I don't even care about the record. They they're four and zero on the season. They're undefeated. This is that, <laughs> that's how I view the Grizzlies right now. It's amazing. If they could, if that'll honestly be one of the most incredible in for in season turnarounds I've seen in a long time. The only yeah, way yeah. I can think of a comparison is that year the Miami Heat went. Uh, I think it was ten and thirty one to start the season. Yeah, and the second mm -hmm. half of the season went thirty one and ten and finished off five hundred for the year. Yeah. That was ridiculous. A complete turnaround. That's what we're looking at here, if they can do it. Yeah, Facts. and this is what happens when you get your hands on a generational player like John Morant, taking a team that was quite literally the worst offense in the NBA, and with your presence on the court, lugging, backpacking, backpacking this team to top 10 offense, they're Crazy. an elite team. They're an elite Crazy. team, bro, and that's what he is. Let John Morant dance. Yeah, let him dance. <laughs> let Team Morant <laughs> dance. <laughs> I can't believe that, too, is a thing. Um, let them cook. Oh, my last team, get we can get this out the way real quick, the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't know if there's r any real interesting questions other than can they get a point of attack defender next to someone like Damian Lillard? Can they figure out their defense and ha have more consistent play? You don't know. <laughs> Probably no, not. I, I don't, I don't know if they have the yeah. avenue to make that move, but my question is can they find a way to not – actually, didn't say that. I was going to say find a way to not let them sink them. So much has been made about this. They're eight and two in the last ten games, and they're firmly the two seed. They have the exactly. same amount of wins as the Celtics. Like they're fucking fine. Players can come around. They're gonna have an elite rim defense, an elite pick and roll combo, two isolation scorers who are among the five best in the league, and then Clay, uh, Chris Middleton who's looking better and better every game. 
They're fine. They're just not perfect. I listen. No team, nobody has ever said that on ball defense is what wins championships these days. We're acting like it's the end all be all for them because they're one big flaw. Every team has flaws. They'll be fine. Yeah, maybe it's just I think everyone's expectations were just blown out of the roof. And maybe like I'm saying this and as if like they're a 500 team or whatever. When like you said, I they're literally the number two seed. <laughs> <laughs> One game back from the Celtics, who we were talking about like if they don't win the championship, it's a big disappointment of the decade. They're one yeah. game behind them. They're yeah, fucking elite. Exactly. They're fantastic. Yeah, exactly. But they can still be better, and that's the scary part about it too. About this conversation, yeah. we all know like this is not their ceiling. If this is their ceiling, then it would be a disappointment. Um, but with that being said, we all know that they can get reach another gear it's all about whether or not they'll do that or not i'm not sure they can honestly i mean the Giannis pick and roll combination has been up and down i think uh, alex hoops had a tweet about it where he was showing the points for possession on that uh by day of the season and it's been like it got better now it's worse a little bit that can definitely get better and they can kind of just continue to reinforce who they are and get better all those things but to your question can they get a perimeter defender i don't think so I don't think they have an avenue to get a real impact guy there with unless it's a buyout guy which is like not usually very impactful I think this is who they are, and they're just the second best team in the East and have a good chance of getting out of the East. It's championship or bust for them. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is you trade for Damian Lillard no, right, and you right, have Giannis right. in his prime, yeah, it's championship or bust. Like Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's it. And they can and they can win a chip. Like this team's good enough, right? Like they're not perfect. No team in the NBA is outside of the super yeah. team era where the Warriors were running shit. Like, but they're yeah. good enough to win a championship. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. It'll be crazy if they won one after all this shit that literally everyone was giving them. <laughs> it was so dramatic, bro. You would have you would have thought they were the Suns with their record. Yeah. Like it was so dramatic. Like yeah. we're four games in the season and people were fucking screaming for the skies. Like, oh my god, are we doomed? Yeah, Bucks exactly. fans need to chill. <laughs> exactly. It's funny, man. Right. You have I got a couple teams. teams. Ooh, I got two. Go. Yeah. How many you got left, Donovan? I have I have four, but my my teams my teams are very Damn. interesting. So if you have non interesting teams, go ahead. Okay, and we got six teams. Yeah, left. Jesus Christ. Okay, I, got I, I can I can I got speed past past two of them. Go for Let's it. Do go it. for it. Then we'll All be right. even. The the first one. I just want to know, right? Leon Rose, let me know. Are the New York Knicks? Are we trading for a star? Right? Tell me what's up. <laughs> I just I just need to know because a lot of a lot has has gone on this past week. Nasty discourse about you know Jalen Brunson and what Becky Hammond says. You guys are listen. You guys are hating on Becky just because she's a woman. She didn't say anything. Yeah, y'all hate women. It's it's, it's ridiculous, but misogynist the, facts. But this this core, we know that it's not necessarily championship caliber. I just want to know: we making a move or what? Right? That's all I want to know. So it's a simple question. Th- that's, that's line. <laughs> exactly. Right? DMs are open. So that that's for the Knicks. <laughs> DMs are open. <laughs> the second, the se- my second team is the San Antonio Spurs, and I want to know how much longer are we going to let Greg Popovich coach? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put him in retirement home? Make him retire? I'm <laughs> just saying. All I'm all I'm saying is they gave him a five year extension this summer. I understand that. By the time the Spurs really get rolling, he's going to be about 76, 77 years old. Damn! It's it's we've seen over this year and even in past years that while we all have the respect for Greg Popovich, he hasn't necessarily done a lot of the practices that smart, modern NBA teams do. And I understand that a lot of that has been personnel because they've sucked. Mm. But right now, would you consider Greg Popovich one of the three best coaches in the NBA? Probably it's hard not. Three? One of Pro- the worst rosters not. in the NBA. Yeah, but to be fair, it's hard to no, think of under- them in any way like that when the rosters they've had. So I, I, under- I, under- I understand that. But even even with bad teams, right, and or bad coach or like – even with bad teams and good coaches, there is a certain level of like floor raising. And obviously your team is sucked, right? I'm not trying to, I'm going to try to make it seem like Greg Popovich is trash, but you're going to get to a point where it's probably going to be, need to be a new era in San Antonio. So I just want to know how long are we going to, are we going to let this happen? Because by the time he gets to like 77, 78, it's going to be two years, $32 million left on his deal. Is that buyout enough to where you can say, all right, pop, thanks for everything. We're going to go in a new direction and actually (laughs) start to build this, you know, back up. So I just want to know that. Damn. That's a that's a question. You're saying they're they're gonna do him like Bill Belichick. Facts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate Oof. it. What Very a parallel. comparison. Pa- parallel wow. stories right now. That's crazy. So, yeah. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Th- those are those right, are my I got two teams. teams. I got two teams left. Uh, they're both decent to talk about. Miami Heat. 
My mm. question is, will they have enough shot making come playoff time? For all the years you've seen them be a really good team, making finals out of thin air, the question has always been, is their offense going to be good enough to have the firepower to compete? You know, they have the defense. Last year they made the run because Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Jimmy Butler, shooting out of their minds, and they really like were able to keep up with these high-profile offensive teams because of that. Two of those guys aren't there anymore. I'm sure Jimmy will still be Jimmy. They've managed to maybe be a little bit better than that team last year, despite losing that depth, because Jaime Jaquez is him. Fantastic player day one. He dropped, I forgot what he had. What did he have the other day whenever Jimmy Butler was out? It was like 30, I think. Yeah, Yeah, he had 30. He's been incredibly efficient. Tyler Hero has been great. He wasn't there for the playoff run last year. He was great last year. We'll we'll have that to replace, let's call it Max Drews. And Duncan Robinson is just resurgence, saved his career, and is legitimately a good, like, three-level scorer now for some reason. Or I guess two levels. Not really a (laughs) mid-range guy. But, like, is that conglomeration of wing players going to give them enough juice come playoff time with Bam and Jimmy doing Bam and Jimmy stuff? Man. I don't, I, I think, I think so. Because I think what Hawkins has provided for them and having another, like, creator and some, and somebody who can make stuff happen for himself, a lot of times, like, with, you know, if you are, if you have Hero or, or Robinson on the floor, you have a lot of stuff where it's very motion based, and and if they if they can't get free and they can't get off, ho- hockey's can go and get you a bucket. So I think that I think they're they're going to be okay, and it's also it's also kind of refreshing that they're not going to be relying on Caleb Martin to drop twenty five every <laughs> night. True, and he can yeah, I forgot focus. about him. Yeah, yeah, he he had his Lynn Sanity moment too. I forgot about that. Yeah, so it's they're they're good. they're going to be fine. I think Hawkins is his emergence has been a godsend for them and he's been fantastic so i i think they're they're gonna be good yeah i think I they're gonna be roughly as good as they have been for the last four or five years like we're not gonna pick them to be one of the three best teams in the conference but it will not be shocking in the least if we look up and they're in the conference finals facts facts i agree yeah that he just brings he's a fresh breath of air and he adds another layer to the cake the wheat cake that we all know that they've had but they've just been like scrapping for the uh wheat random cake, notes nice <laughs> random <laughs> notes on wikipedia according to wikipedia his nickname is juan wick that is hard, hard as That's fuck hard. and because of that i would not be surprised they make the eastern conference finals again <laughs> <laughs> love, it. love it all right what's your next team donovan uh you know what i won't have them as my last one let's talk about the clippers for a brief minute i okay. want to know and they're gonna have to answer this Will we get people to come into our new stadium? And oh. this and this this question uh, once again involves a lot of other questions. Th- that means are we re-signing Kawhi and Paul George and for how long? Are we did we have a respectable enough assuming they don't win the championship, which I don't think that they will. Did we have a respectable enough playoff run to where people can kind of get behind this core again of Paul, Kawhi, James Harden, and and Russ. And for how long? Because they are going into the state, they're going into the new stadium uh, in two years, I think. They need to know what the future of this team is because it's been muddling, right? People keep getting hurt. What is going to happen? And what is the what is the construction of this team going to look like? And so for them, this playoff run is going to determine probably the next like six or seven years of Clipper basketball because they're going to lock themselves in because the only thing that we've heard is they're not going to blow it up because they have to get people into seats into the new arena. So I want to know, are you guys actually going to do what it takes to get butts in seats? It's it's, going to play really well. Yeah, Yeah. I know. I know. And, that, so and that's why. Qu- I, I, know, I know you do that. The question is, do you think this is a formula from what we've seen from James Harden, what we've seen from Kawhi Leonard, assuming Paul George stays, do you see this being the core four, or core three, I guess, because Russ isn't really part of that, you mm-hmm. would think, long term. Yeah. Do you see this core three sticking together for years? Or I should say, do you think it's worthwhile? I don't know if it's worth... I don't know if it's worthwhile. Well, okay, here's the thing. If the goal is to win a championship in the next three to four years, I... I don't think you will be successful, but I think it's worthwhile because you might as well there have we all stars on the team. Yeah, um, you have a chance, right? Like they've been good. Like they're not beginning of this core being put together after James Harden trade. We were like, oh yeah. fuck, are they going to be ass? Yeah, they're yeah. not ass. They're 
the Clippers, right? Like the way we've known them for years. They're a good team. It's sort of similar to the Miami Heat where we're like, okay, we'll see it in the playoffs. Does it, is it going to work? We'll see. Mm -hmm. You're not the most talented team. Let's see if you make a run. The Heat have managed to do that. They've been able to be on the good side of that where they make it happen for whatever reasons. And they know the Clippers haven't. Yeah, yeah. But the Clippers haven't. So it's kind of just like a we'll see come playoff time how your matchups fall. But they're certainly good enough to be in the mix, right? Yes, they, they can. They can win. They are. can win. A, they can win a playoff series. Yes. It won't be shocking yeah. if they win two and make a conference finals. We don't. Maybe yeah. we'll see them be in the Nuggets, or whatever. But like, they're in that mix, and that's a realistic outcome. And if we all feel that's the case, at least you know there's a there's a puncher chance of them making some kind of run. Yeah, I think I can see this team being together for the next two years. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think that question can only be half answered until obviously we see what they do in the playoffs. But loosely, I'm on the same wavelength as you guys. I kind of disagree a little bit when it comes to comparing them to the Miami Heat. I think they should be a couple of steps ahead of that because the star power between Kawhi and PG is just there and Harden semi reinventing his game. Uh, not being a ball dominant twenty point per game score that we that we're used to seeing him, I think that there should be a at least expectation that they're in the realm for championship contention. And as long as you have that, you should be okay. And you should ride it out till the wheels fall off. And when I say the wheels fall off, until them twenty thirty five picks start to kick in, and that's when you can kick <laughs> the tires and be all right. We can. I don't want to play with you guys anymore. Let's let's play. Let's <laughs> another be ten years now. of Kawhi, Paul George, and James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I funny. think you just ride it out until Kawhi's out of his prime. Like, oh shit, my laptop's about to die. Oh, you guys wow. keep talking. Yeah. Nah. To I'm gonna finish what you're saying, Isaac. You definitely should ride it out until Kawhi is out of his prime because right now he has been the peak Kawhi that we are used to. And that we love seeing. And until he is not that, the second that Kawhi honestly is not that, that's when you should kill it because there's no point in anything if he's not that. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. We, this team lives and dies by Prime Kawhi and how much he's able to muster out in these later years of his prime. Exactly. I agree with that. That was a great way to start and end that Clippers conversation. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Last team I have Sacramento Kings, another team where we're going to get into trade conversations a little bit because. Last year, we saw that when this team is clicking in all cylinders and things are going right, we get the best version of the offense, the best version of the defense you can hope for being like 12th or so. They can be a three seed and they can be a very respectable first round exit. This year, things have been <laughs> going not quite as well, approximately the similar level of team, but had the wins haven't been quite where they were before. I think it's safe to say this team isn't going to contend. Can they make an upgrade at the two through four spot? Because maybe it's Zach Lowe heard say this, that End of the day, no matter what you think of De'Aaron Fox and Tawanta Sabonis as a duo, you know how I feel about the latter half of that duo. Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray just probably isn't a talented enough trio to flank them. Yeah. And yeah. can they do something about that? We talk about every team in the league and their connection to OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Larry Markkinen. Can they snag one of those guys? Because I think Keegan Murray is worthwhile to keep for a long time. We've seen flashes of the offensive leap that fans are hoping for in like the next star or whatever. But I think defensively, he's been really good this year and like making strides that you'd hope for from an older second year player. I don't know how you can start Kevin Herter and Harrison Barnes as your two wing combos. And I've been saying this for a minute. But to take but a I don't think the answer is that Levine. <laughs> no, to, to take a couple steps back, I just want to say Kevin Keegan Murray is should be an untouchable piece. And yeah. We've seen a leap from him, not on the offensive side of the floor, like their head coach wanted to see. But on defense, he's been the most consistent defender and the most probably impactful defender that they have. So he's almost untouchable in most conversations. Yeah. But with that being said, you said no, Zach Levine. Fuck that. I'm bringing him right back in these conversations. <laughs> Stand <laughs> on it. His his value is so low. You tell me you wouldn't make that move for for Kevin Herter in a first or whatever it might take? Sure. sure. I guess. If that's the best available, but I don't think it would move the needle that much. If it'll move the I would do the it if, if, if you bit. couldn't get one of the other guys that have a defensive impact. Yeah, I would do it. Exactly. Yeah, but I think that's the way it should be looked at. I'd rather get Pascal Siakam. Same. Hmm. Next to... And put, and put Keegan Murray three. Yeah, put Keegan Murray three. Hmm. That's a that's big a, ass lineup. A, I was all about to say. That's in a good way, though. Keegan that's some length. Yeah. Can definitely play the three. Yeah, I agree. You're absolutely right about that. Now that right, that gives them the defensive versatility like a motherfucker. They match up really well alongside 
teams like the Minnesota Timberwolves, and I guess you could say the Denver Nuggets. But outside of that, that might be the only way for them to make the next leap as a yeah, team. Whatever it may yeah. be, some move has to happen there. And I guess my question is, do they want to do that? We've heard them linked in talks about being a buyer. Maybe some of that has just been like reporters assuming because like it logically checks out. But do, do they actually have the will and desire to make a move to, you know, go all in with this core? That's my question. We'll see. Yeah. We should. We, we Donovan, see. what's your last team? My last team is the New Orleans Pelicans. And okay. my, my question for them is, will you trust Zion Williamson? Not can you trust Zion Williamson, which I think is two mm. different questions. The question is, will you trust him? Because if you do, and if you want to trust Zion, then you have to make moves. I think B.I. might have to be shipped out. Uh, Jonas might have to be shipped out, right? You're going to have to do some, some roster reconstruction. If you decide that Zion Williamson is the piece that you are going to build your team around. If not, let's get him out of there and we will start this thing all over <laughs> again. But I need to know if you want to trust Zion as your franchise cornerstone. I need that answered this year. Listen, we can't, we can't do this anymore. Y'all went ahead and saw that tattoo that that was posted on Twitter <laughs> oh today. God. Would you I trust someone off with that. an off center? Off you, would you trust someone with an off center tattoo to no, on your chest? You're not right in the head. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, come on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. I don't even care that's off centered because clearly he wanted the thing to be over his heart, which is why it's slightly off centered. But it's yeah. just fucking ugly too. I mean, no. I think that's so big. It looks, just looks so that. poorly placed. Like, it's ass. It's just wrong think, decisions after wrong decisions. And I just like, you're not, you are not taking steps on the floor or off the floor that I need you to, to make to be the number. What is this, man? Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's, that's a us, cool idea. We're going to get his terms of service demonetized for this. <laughs> oh, no facts. Is this TOS? <laughs> <laughs> Bad tattoo, TOS? <laughs> no. I just can't. Since we went on pick, uh, we went on uh, not pick side. Uh, wrong podcast. Let's keep it a we buck. went on. Let's keep it a buck. Uh, like a week ago, and one of the guys in there informed me that there was a Mariah Mills tweet where she said she saw soda cans in his bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that. I haven't stopped thinking about it. Oh my god! All I can <laughs> think about is soda cans in the bathroom. Do you know how crazy that is? <laughs> really, really, really deep that shit and think about it. Would you put soda cans in your bathroom? And if the answer is obviously no, because you're not insane, if you were to imagine soda cans in your bathroom, what would the context be? Were you drinking soda cans while you showered? While you shit? Yeah. While you brush your teeth? I don't get it. It has to be to brush your teeth. He's probably... <laughs> no! He's, Mountain Dew mouthwash? Yeah! Yeah, that's, that's what it is. He's using the Mountain Dew. You're not using it in the shower because the water can get into the into the soda can, right? It's watered down Mountain Dew. You don't want that, Right. Maybe you might be too focused on what you got to do if you're sitting down on the toilet handling your business. He's definitely taking a sip, right? Swishing it around, spinning it out, and then brushing his teeth. That's that's nasty work. Y'all are so wow. wrong. The obvious answer is he is cleaning the, the bathroom while he's enjoying his Fanta, maybe diet soda. It could be diet soda. Cleaning my, my up. Could be fucking Multiple lying. cans? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, yeah, that's true. That is kind of contradictory. <laughs> no, you're cleaning it's up. It's a habit. Leaving cans it's a bathroom. habit. This is clearly part of your morning routine. I can't have this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's so. Oh, yeah, this is wrong. This is wrong. Listen, this. Let's bring it back to basketball. Yeah. I need to know though, for real, is if Zion um, or if the Pelicans want to want want to center the the franchise around it because this year yeah. he hasn't he hasn't necessarily taken the leaps like last year. Whenever we saw him. We were having conversations of like, hey, is Zion the top 10 player in the in the NBA? Is he going to like win MVP, right? He's in those discussions. They were the one seed for, for a minute. It's looked completely different this year. And I need to know what is going on. And we've all talked about how the fit is just really, really weird. And I'm not going to acknowledge these tweets while I'm talking about this. But like we we've, we've <laughs> talk, we've talk, we've talked a lot about the fit between him and Ingram. Right? What are you gonna do, like with Valentunis and Zion? How does that work? It needs a lot of tweaking. So the Pelicans have a yeah. lot of work to do. I saw a tweet today. Yeah. Um, remember last year you said we saw him be MVP level caliber player. We're all like top ten guy potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was most of the month of December before he got hurt, where he averaged over thirty for the month. And I was thinking back, it was like last year's December versus this year's December, where it was like 
22 points per game and like far less efficiency. Yeah. I thought about it. I don't know. I thought about it. I saw a context in the thread. I forgot that Brandon Ingram missed that whole month. That's why he was going so stupid because they had to do point Zion because they lost Ingram and he had to take on more usage. Mm -hmm. I for, we all forget that in this whole wow, thing. I did. Yeah. We saw Zion at his peak when there was no Brandon Ingram. I can't believe you just found this tweet. That was crazy. That was so fast. Yeah. yeah. He was averaging 29.8 points per game, 7.5 rebounds and 5 assists. This December, it was 19, 5, and 4. Ingram missed that whole month. We forget that. That's a big part of this. That Remember when Zion was like, I'm trying to buy into this thing we got going on, this program? Yeah. We we're all like, what the fuck does that mean? You bought into it last year? Ingram wasn't there last year for a large part of that when we saw Zion thriving. He means Damn. he's trying to buy into splitting usage with Brandon Ingram. I never, I have some reason wow. that went over yeah. my head. The code has That's a big cracked. part of this. They might have yeah. to trade Ingram for a guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands to free Zion. But my question to y'all is, one of your question and statement is like, the only lure to like, the potential of Zion Williamson is if he can be that guy. And in order to be the guy, you have to be on the court on a consistent basis. And if you trade away Brandon Ingram, you want to hope that Zion is a top 10 player. That's the only thing. You don't do this if Zion's going to be like this mid top 20 player. Not mid, but to his standards, that is mid, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. And so that's that's why my question is, right? Because if you if you are looking at this in hindsight, and let's say that Zion doesn't become whatever we think he can, then obviously you wouldn't make the move. So that's why the question is, will the Pelicans trust him enough that he is going to take that leap, that he's going to take that step and that they can build the franchise around them? It's, I don't think that Zion has showed us enough to where you can say, or that you can feel comfortable saying, I trust Zion to do X, Y, and Z. But the Pelicans, yeah. obviously, they gave him the extension. He was the number one pick in the draft. You have to make a move. So let's see what they want to do moving forward. I think you have to trust him. I think yeah. Brandon Ingram's dope. I like him as much as anybody. Former Laker, I have a soft spot for him. It's not altering the future of your franchise if you trade Brandon Ingram. If you trade him to try to get the best version of Zion, that means you're taking the bet on the ceiling that clearly the only way to build a championship ceiling is to have a top 10 player in his prime. And the only way to get there with your current outlook is by maximizing Zion Williamson. Only guy you have on the roster that can be that level of dude. And that's a risk worth taking compared to like if you trade him and like try to be mid with like a Brandon Ingram, CJ McCall, and Trey Murphy core, that's not a ceiling play at all. That's a floor play if you're trying to be respectable and rid yourself of the potential downside of Zion. I would take a bet on the ceiling of Zion because you're not going to look back 10 years from now and be like, oh, if we didn't trade Brandon Ingram, we could have really made a run. He's not that dude. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. And I would say the Pelicans are in a perfect situation to make a decision like this because they have the Ingram place and waiting off the bench and Trey Murphy, who's exactly. a walking flamethrower. And then on top of that, if something does happen in your future, something treacherous, Zion gets hurt or whatever, or Trey Murphy for some reason doesn't work out, you have so many assets still in your back pocket from the AD trade a couple years ago. So regardless of the situation, they, they need to they need to make some they they need to make a move. And I'm so happy you brought this to all of our attention because this literally blew my mind. Man, just do it already. Trade Brandon Ingram and Jonas Valanciunas for Miles Turner and Buddy Hield. Make it happen. <laughs> Dude, they've been Turner flirting with the idea of Miles Turner forever. The Pacers haven't wanted to move him. I'm sure they were trying to get him for scrap pieces. Brandon Ingram's better than him. Less is more. Get the stretch five you need next to Zion to unlock him and let Trey Murphy thrive as a three. Facts. We just do it. Need it. We do it, need it. We need it. We need it. You know what else we need? We need the crayon eaters to rejoice because it is TikTok time. <sighs> it is TikTok time. Are you smoking on that TikTok pack? This shit is hitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to put a green screen edit of smoke, Isaac, real quick. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's you don't want to send a bitch to me and I'll do it. <laughs> it is TikTok time. Let's roll. We two hours in. Woo! As always, we're going to start with the draft. Mo, I think you have a draft idea you wanted to do today. What is it? Yeah, man. Super unique. We're going to go ahead and draft the best light skin player and try to build <laughs> them perfectly. You're going to build your ideal, man. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. So for the audio listeners, we got to draft them based off of their body, their shooting, their finishing, and their defense. How you say it like that? What did I say it like? <laughs> their body. <laughs> okay, yo, you let that wide drag hella long. I did not say it like that. You're making me sing. 
That's what I picked Drake. <laughs> he said, yo, I need the body. I need the shooting. Oh, relax. <laughs> Oh God! Defense bro, going relax. crazy. You act like I'm gonna pick Jordan Poole Low like key. number one, bro. Relax. <laughs> Kill me now. All right, the <laughs> order is Donovan, me, Mo. <laughs> you guys know it works. Body shooting, finishing defense, passing. Donovan, who's the first pick in your light skin draft? I'm taking the greatest straight from the greatest light skin of all time. Give me Steph Curry shooting. Ah, uh, man, oh man. You, you know you what? Got us there. I'm going to follow up. Give me Clay Thompson shooting. Okay. Damn. Shoot us off the board. I'm with you. We're locked in. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. That's solid. Go ahead and give me Victor Wembanyama body. I'm built different already. And then for defense, go ahead and give me Tim Duncan. Any I don't know if Tim counts. What? I don't, I don't I know don't, if Tim counts. I don't think Tim counts. I think you're really stretching light skin here. Yeah, I think I think Tim is in the same category as Dejounte. Well, I think we gave oh. you Wemby. I think we gave you Wemby, and you shouldn't push it, bro. I don't look at Tim. I don't think I don't <laughs> think Tim is. <laughs> just imagine the Peter Griffin meme right now, where he's just looking at the color. <laughs> no, yeah, nah, bro, he nah, counts. Nah, nah. Okay, if he doesn't yeah, count, nah. he's not Tim. He can't have okay, Tim. No, I'll give okay. you Wemby because I'm like I'll whatever, but you can't have Tim. Okay, if it doesn't count, go ahead and give me Tyrese Halliburton passing. Ah. Damn. There we go. That's good. Okay. There we go. Listen, I copy Donovan first pick. I'm going to copy you second pick. Give me LaMelo ball passing. Mm. Couldn't take an L there. Just as okay. good, probably. Okay, okay. Maybe better. Give me... Hmm. Okay, here's, here's where I'll go. I will go with Aaron Gordon finishing. Fuck! Damn! Steal the Nuts on the before. face. And I will go... <laughs> With Jason Tatum body. Okay. Okay. Damn. Listen, that, that build moves you? That's yeah, peak light skin right there. You can't get more light skin than that. You got Listen, Curry. You want, those, six, you want the six pale nine, shoulders? That's what I'm saying. Six nine wing who can shoot like that? Dunk on everybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a cheat code. You're cooking okay. so far. You're cooking so far. I got finishing, defense, and body. Who do I have written down for finishing? Okay. I'm save that. Listen, there's not a lot of good defenders here. Actually, no, I'll save that. You're not going to think about that. <laughs> give me, <laughs> that sinister ass laugh. <laughs> give me prime Blake Griffin finishing. You pick mm. Aaron Gordon, I'll pick the better Aaron Gordon. Mm. Okay. 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 I like that. That's good. That's good. I like that. For defense, give me another Frenchman, Rudy Gobert. Come on. And then, what you mean, come on? Are we calling him Light Skin? He literally is. Rudy, what are you Rudy talking like, about? Rudy yeah, Lyman. he literally okay. is. He's not me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> he literally is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then for shooting, go ahead and give me give me Michael Porter Jr. Never switch. That's a good bitch. pick. There you go. Yeah. He has a great set shot too. Unblockable. <laughs> no, listen, hey, most kind of cooking. Wemby's body? Most kind of cooking. Body? Yeah. <laughs> Just no, an, most kind of making a Greek god. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking. I'm picking the peak light skinned dude right now, bro. Imagine <laughs> only Wimby. way. Oh wow, this is crazy. The only way for me to compete with what you're making is to make the real peak light skin. Give me Kelly Oubre's body, and that means I get his face. <laughs> Man, his body is brittle. What are we talking about right <laughs> I now? I get his he's face. Like I'm winning the light skin category. It's over. What do you he's mean washed. he's brittle? He got hit by a car and was back on the court in a month. He's solid. <laughs> Ten toes. He's solid. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna find a more light skin, light skin than Kelly Oubre. It, it, I win that category. I don't care. Can't Fuck do it. Me. Can't do it. All right. <laughs> for my passing, give me Jason Kidd. Right. Okay. And then for my defense, I need I need somebody who could do it all on the perimeter and and in the paint. Give me Chet Holmgren. <laughs> what? <laughs> He saw a picture of Chet in the do rag. You saw like, the do rag. Nah, he one of us. At. You know where I'm at. Can you tell Chet, Holmgren? He said, I'll let that slide. <laughs> he said 54 from Trey Ball off Hainpool. It's OD. Yeah, <laughs> he, he saw. Wild. He saw he Chet throwing up gang signs. He's like, nah, he one of us. <laughs> hey, You're <that> different. <laughs> <laughs> You're different. <laughs> Damn. All the way for me to compete here, one category left. Give me the arch nemesis of the light skin Drake, Dylan Brooks. Wow. Oh. Yeah. 
Dylan that's Rooks' good, defense? Mm-hmm. Now that is tough. Now that is tough. I got Kelly Oubre doing a whole lot of this. <laughs> <I'm winning>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I got to finish this off with shooting, or my bad, with finishing. And to do that, go ahead and give me Anthony Davis. Simple pick. Easy pick. Okay. I Yeah, okay, I, I can see that. Also, can I go back? Can, can I revise my my defense? I want to give a, a real light skin for defense. No, <laughs> no, you can't. It's over. That was too funny. <laughs> no, that's what I was banking on. I, this out, it's just jokes. Damn, it's just jokes. It's hilarious. <laughs> I was just trying to get jokes off. You're so, stuck. To read my team off to the audio listeners, for body, I'm Wemby. Shooting, MPJ. Finishing, Anthony Davis. He's light skin. Defense, Rudy Gobert, and passing Tyrese Halliburton. You're, you're just really toeing the line the whole time. Bro, <laughs> if Andrew Davis steps outside, his nose is turning red when it's cold as fuck. He's light skinned. That's the pass right there. Okay? Whenever Whatever. someone hits him in the face, his nose turns red, bro. Whenever he's running hella hard, nose turn red, cheeks red. He's light skinned. That's the pass right there. Yeah, we're getting unserious on this pod. <laughs> we are leaning have, in. The, the body and face of Kelly Oubre. Clay Thompson shooting, the Blake Griffin finishing, face. Dylan Brooks defense, and LaMelo ball passing. All right. Okay. I have Jason Tatum body, Steph Curry shooting, Aaron Gordon finishing, Chet Holmgren defense, and Jason Kidd passing. Now, listen, if I was to give a real defensive pick, though, give me Lonzo nope, Ball nope, defense. No, doesn't matter. Don't care. We don't want to hear it. I'm giving yeah. Lonzo Ball defense. Jason Kidd's a fake <laughs> pick, too, to be honest with you. He really don't pass as that. Uh, oh, well now we're getting a whole different type of conversation that is neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this will be a whole different podcast for you soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as I'll get Uma oh, on man. the phone real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing we're going to do, moving on. <laughs> we should never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> we can never do that again. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Let's get negative. Okay. What we're going to do is, I'm going to name some NBA players, and you're going to tell me what their biggest flaw is. What's one thing this player needs to fix? We are in our bag today. Unserious negativity? Wow. Uh, You are in your bag, sir. (laughs) Staying true. (laughs) This is is for you, honestly. This one. You were talking about about race relations when we're relating to Joel Embiid's MVP. (laughs) You get to talk race relations in a draft, and now you get to hate? This is for you, man. Listen, this is you my eating, night. You in a buffet right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm eating. Feasting. <laughs> so real simple. What's this NBA player's biggest flaw? First up, LaMelo Ball. Man. First this and man, foremost. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, first and foremost, them ankles are made out of glass. <laughs> yeah. Running too many red lights. He has a whole five-minute compilation on YouTube where he just <laughs> is speeding Net senselessly, those are only two flaws for him. <laughs> yeah, man, it's got to be health at this point. Like he hasn't even had a chance to make a superstar leap because his health is coming in. Uh, because his health has stood in his way every single year. I want him to have a healthy season so bad. Listen, you guys, you guys are going that he needs to be more like his brother. He needs to play some defense. He's a cone. <laughs> He's a cone. No, he don't even need yeah. to be on his brother. To be honest with you, we need to ask bigger questions. What did Levar Ball? Feed his kids because them boys cannot stand on court at all. <laughs> we need very lunchables to be investigated. Yeah, for real. <laughs> no protein, no milk in their diet whatsoever. Bro, listen, no, they water. listen. They were they were at Del Taco every episode of Ball in the Family. They were feasting. Yeah, I was watching. That's crazy. I was watching. That's a Zion Williamson diet. Yo, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, his biggest flaw is that new Puma commercial he has where they have him in a barbershop going, bruh, I'm literally him. That's his <laughs> biggest flaw. He should have never made that shit. <laughs> Immediately since he did that, his NBA career was over. Damn. Yeah, he sprayed his ankle the next week after it debuted. He yeah. cursed himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, next up, Tyrese Halliburton. Ah, oh, man. Same thing. Man can't play defense. <laughs> I could score on Tyrese. He doesn't. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't move anybody. Unless you get down to the post, it might be a scary sight. <laughs> Listen, you, you see my drop step in person. You know what that's like. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> <true>. <laughs> nah, defense is number one thing, and, and honestly, it has to be an effort thing where he has to. 
as a leader of that team, he has to enforce a defensive intensity that others will follow. Because right now, his goal is just run up and down that court and get as many points as possible. <laughs> well, okay. No. I thought Nikhil was going to say something. Oh, okay. yeah. His, his mic came in. <laughs> no, nah, the hairline is fine. The hairline is okay. It's straight. Hey, it ain't bad at all. Can't yeah, hear that. He's like, and listen, he's like looking up in this picture. If you if you've seen him like on a after a haircut, he looks fine. After a haircut, <laughs> catch him on his best day. He's all right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, not, honestly, his, it's not his worst flaw. I will tell you that. The worst flaw is uncontrollable. He is in Indiana. That's his worst. Flaw. He's hooping right now. His marketability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Marketability down the plunger. Ain't no reason why he shouldn't have over 500k followers on Instagram right now. <laughs> Wait, does he not have over 500k brand. followers? No. No, we did that game, remember? Maybe at 600k. Now, I forgot about that. Wow, he is cloudless. Yeah, we don't care yeah. about Hoosiers on this side. <laughs> That's not our bad. <laughs> no motion. All right, wow. next up, Jalen Brunson. Damn. What is his Ooh. biggest flaw? Yeesh. Size. He's not six know. five. He's, he's been the dead course lately. Yeah, yeah he's just if he was yeah. not tall. He's just not tall. Yeah, honestly, offensively, he has the full package. The only thing holding him back—that's the reason he's not an elite rim finisher or an elite passer—is the size. If he was six six, he would just be Shea Gildas Alexander. Yeah, now people, exactly. people hating on him. That's crazy. But other, <laughs> but other than that, it honestly probably is his uh, passing and his vision. That's just not his game. He's never a consistent first initiator. Guy. Yeah. But that's okay. There's so many point guards like that in the NBA today. It's yeah, he, true. Listen, it's because he's smaller. He just he has to worry about getting his, right? He can't see over, over the defense. And I understand it's it's okay, right? Listen, we need to get Jalen Brunson with those insoles that make you three inches taller, right? <laughs> you start practicing in them, he might he might do some stuff. Again, let we're him be the, let him be six four. All NBA we're first those moon shoes that they were popular in the two thousands, like you had little bouncy shoes <laughs> yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> oh, he might be the goat if he could put him in one of them. He's gonna be three sixty dunking between the legs. <laughs> Ain't no stopping that. And he's going at your chest too. It's over. <laughs> we, we gotta we gotta get him some old school Reebok pumps. We we pump the the, the tongue. <laughs> he's gonna be like Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Shout over. Out great. Next up, Anthony Davis. <laughs> We all know what, what, it is. You, what do you want to talk about? What do you <laughs> want to talk about? The fact, listen, is it the inconsistency? Is it the injuries? What is it? Right? Wh- which one would you expectations? Go with? The high ass expectations that people have on it. Cop bro. out. No, score thirty <laughs> points in three straight games in a playoff series. Let me see it. I need <laughs> you to be in your bag, please. No, the biggest flaw he has is that at some point people decided he should be one of the best players in the world. And now nobody's satisfied with him just being the eighth best player in the world. Like it's a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm (laughs) sorry. The generational talent. We had we had two high expectations for thinking that he was going to be the best player in the world for being 6'10 and being able to shoot jump shots, being able to block shots and being able to lead a franchise. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Stop. Listen. He did not live up to expectations. He was supposed to be the best the player world, in the, the world. The ceiling's collapsing. He's only a second option on a championship team, averaging 27 in, points per game. Oh, no. In the <laughs> world. <And> if, <laughs> Call the fucking <laughs> cops. In the and world. for being real, it's just the jump shot. Other than that, he's yeah. a fine player all around. There's, all right. no, there's no reason why people should be tweeting at him to get his CDL. People just hate his ass. That's why. Because <laughs> he, he, he's, he's big right. for nothing. <laughs> All right, next up, Victor Wembanyama. Oh, that he plays for the Spurs and they have no point guard. That's his, that's his biggest problem. It's not his fault. <laughs> his biggest flaw is that he's 19 and he hasn't hit his prime yet. Because when he does, the league is fucked. That's the only thing holding him back. Time. Yeah, time and Greg Popovich just using his rookie year as a science experiment. That's literally it. <laughs> him using him for Jeremy Sohan's development. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What a travesty. That's a curse. <laughs> oh my god! Listen, Malachi Listen, Branham I, starting now, saving the day. At least he has those H E B commercials. Those they were kind of good. <laughs> oh, then that's I hard. You right? Yeah, I <laughs> that's great. All right, next up we have Luka Doncic. Ooh, Ooh. man, this is a flawless dude. We're I guess that right his now. media picture looks like this, right? That, that <laughs> that's the biggest flaw. Right, I need him actually <laughs> smiling in a picture because what what's going on? He looks mad confused in this picture. 
You got fish lips going on. <laughs> Y'all just cooking him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he's a perfect offensive player. Only flaw is he's not a great defender. If he was, he would be head and shoulders the best player in the world right now, I think. And that's probably going to remain his only flaw going forward because pretty soon we're going to have conversations of him maybe being the best player in the world despite that. Oh, Exactly. Exactly. Get this man more help. That's his biggest flaw. <laughs> it's yeah. uncontrollable. His biggest flaw is that he was too good too fast so they couldn't build a young core around him and now he's stuck in mediocrity. Facts. His second best player so far has been Derek Lively on a consistent basis. Tragic. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Brunson erasure, but I'll live with it. <laughs> Stop hating on my guy. All right, next up. Zion Williamson. Oh my God, this picture is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I would have went with the <laughs> I would have went with the original answer that everybody always knows, but this tattoo is his new biggest problem. He has to get this <laughs> removed immediately. Get this off your body, Honestly, man. Yeah, it's not health anymore. At one point, it was health and body conditioning. Now it's just decision making. From sodas in the bathroom, from oh eating t- <laughs> from crepes that. to sodas in the bathroom to this tattoo, we got to evaluate decision making from top to bottom. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, the professional answer is his conditioning. <clears throat> yeah, that's just really it. And then other than that, his ability to... Yeah, it's just his conditioning, to be honest with you. That's it. Be right, that's his defense and defensive intensity. People always no, say, like, true. I haven't seen him get down in defensive stance his whole career. And as, as like, a joke, that shit's real. At Duke, he was swatting shots, had a high motor. We thought he'd be a legitimate two-way star. He, mm-hmm. His ass does not try at all on defense. It's kind of pitiful for, some, Isaac, for someone that talented. Isaac, you were right the first time. It's decision making. You a grown man. <laughs> Why do you have this tattoo? Come on. You can't get past it. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Decision making overall. Smarten up. Yeah, That's man. crazy. That's the end of that. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do, let's glaze LeBron a little bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do our tier list for the day. Oh, I no, I forgot. We changed it. It's no longer about LeBron. Sorry. My bad, y'all. The glazing's waiting. I'm sorry. It's in my DNA. I can't help it, but talk about LeBron. <laughs> We're going to do a tier list, and this is actually going to be different versions of the Boston Celtics we're putting into a tier list. Okay. Okay. A we did some Lakers for you a, few, uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Now we're moving to the other legendary team, and we're going to go team by team over the decades and put them in a tier list. Love it. Whew. Simple and plain. So let me set up my chair. Boston Celtics tier list. First up, the 2008 Celtics. I, listen, they won a championship. They, they so won a championship. Yeah. So you would want to put them in S. But these are the most Correct. annoying people on the planet <laughs> when it comes to this championship. So we're not going to give them that respect. We're going to put them in A. And that is going to be that. They talk about this at every point they can. Like they were Facts. a dynasty. You got one ring. A. Bro. If you ask me in 2009, easy S tier. The decade after that where they made themselves the most unlikable championship team of all time. Down day, exactly. bro. If you only ha- if you only win one, and that's your only real chance at it, I'll be bragging about it for the next eighty years. They need to be S. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't give you that. Okay. I can't give you that. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as fuck. <laughs> All right, next up, twenty twenty one when they made the finals. All right, you didn't win a chip, so you can't be A. But oh, you, yeah. but you were really good. So I so guess close B. they made it and not want it. So exactly, yeah, yeah we got to go B. Two okay. wins away from an from an NBA championship. So That's close. as close as you can get. Yeah. Who they play in the finals again that year? Uh, uh, Mister Night Night. Oh yeah, and <laughs> the stings. Fuck. You just got That's Steph Curry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, nineteen eighty six. Listen, this peak of Larry Bird. This is an easy S tier. This is one of those teams that is in the conversation for like greatest teams of all time. When you talk yep. about beautiful basketball, ball movement, people at their peak, this this 1986 team, this is it. This is dirty you have multiple Larry this is the standard. peak of their primes, top five player peak of his prime. You can't get much better than this. Dirty Dan Larry Bird, man. And around this time, we heard some of the craziest trash talking stories. This is S tier. This man was spitting dip at halftime, dropping 45 on your favorites. It's crazy. Facts. Doing it with his left hand. Just with his jeans on. Just because. <laughs> <laughs> Him and his Wrangler jeans were unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, 2018, when they had Kyrie playing well. Oh, man, this is like a D. 
<laughs> this team crashed yeah. and burned in the worst yeah. way. Yeah, literally 20 seconds into their season, Gordon Hayward snapped his ankle, bro, on a lob attempt. Oh, not a lob. It wasn't a block attempt. It was so attempt, but it was no, terrible. No, it was a lob attempt. It, it was they a lob attempt. Love. Oh, they gosh. thought he was LeBron. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, vibes on this team were at an all-time low. It seemed like nobody liked each other. Nobody knew their role. And even though that they got to, to the conference finals in 2018, Kyrie wasn't there. And then everything got better because the vibes were, were better. So up and down team, got to put it at D. Yeah. Damn. The best, thing, the best thing to come from this was it was very clear from the jump that Jason Tatum was a star. That's the moral of the story for this season. Duncan on LeBron. At 19. The birth of Jason Tatum. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. He was so great, he stayed 19 for like five years. <laughs> Peter Pan. Probably <laughs> the ageless wonder. <laughs> Never seen 19 before. to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. This year, 2023. Championship favorites. Where are we putting them? Listen, I Should think they they're winning a? the championship, so I'm going to put them in A. Do we go mm. B until they do? Mm, sure, sure. I think they're better than I think what this current say? iteration of the Celtics is better than B, though. They can earn it, but right now B tier was the version of them that actually made the finals. Let's put them there until they can actually win it and go elevate to A tier. That's fair. That's fair. <sighs> I don't like it, but whatever. <laughs> Next up, 1962. Who? Peak of Bill Russell dominance. Oh, peak Bill Russell. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, throw that go. in C tier. No, this needs nah. to be S. This needs to be S, really, bro. No, nah, we can't now. be like Udonis Island. We can't be shitting on Bill Russell S tier just so we don't get yelled yeah. at by the Boston fans. Facts. Well, he had to go through back in them days. Boy, oh boy. Oh, yeah, I forgot he needs that. to be S. Listen, we said it before early TikTok. He beat the Lakers and racism. Yeah. Double chip S tier. That is true. My bad. My bad, Bill. <laughs> 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 Last but not least, 2016 when Isaiah Thomas was eating. Listen, if you ask Off Isaiah Peter. Thomas, this is S tier, right? This is <laughs> the greatest team of all time. Uh, yeah. Probably a C tier. You, you didn't make yeah. the finals, lost in the conference finals, or yeah, yeah, lost in the conference finals, all that. Very good team. Off of is pure it? nostalgia, this should be an A tier. Dude, sister passed away mid playoff performance or mid playoffs, and he went ahead and dropped 50 the next day. It needs to be A, but realistically speaking, they're clearly way better than S, A, B. I would say probably D, too, because they're just that stacked. D. But I want to put them in C. I yeah, mean, I'll the, put them. The, 2018, the 2018 team was better, but nostalgia, Isaiah Thomas is much cooler than the 2018 team. Let's go C. Yeah, Thank you. exactly. No, Listen, yeah, my dad. Respect proud. real hoopers, Five man. 5A Kings are here. And this is our tier list, our Boston Celtics tier list. I like it. Once to again, be honest, guys, this is not that bad. We at all. never miss. We never miss on the series. <laughs> it it really shocks me to this day. Like I think we we like try to mess up sometimes, and it just never happens. Screw that! I think we mess up all the time. But this is past. <laughs> I'm almost never with time. the tier list. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. All right, man. Next video we're gonna do. Which one should we do next? Let's do some deal or no deal. We haven't done this Ooh. in a few weeks. It's a new series we've been running around with. You know how you it works. In- yeah. I give you an NBA trade around a player, and you tell me if you're taking the deal or not. And this week, we're doing Shea Gildas Alexander, most favorite. <laughs> All right, you putting um, me in the same front office as Don, as Donovan. Things are gonna get spicy. This p- picture is crazy as hell, by the way, to audio listeners. This man has me with the Shea Gildas Alexander undies, the tidy whiteies. You did this to Gross. yourself. You threw them Shea undies on your face and just ah. Yeah, we have a picture with him on his face. Why didn't we use that one? I'm heartbroken yeah, by you, this You know why? Because producer Nikhil, Nikhil threatened me. And he said, you need to put this on your face for content. I was like, fuck it, fine, I will. And I did it. Embarrassing. Let's try to cop out now. Nikhil, I was in the room. Nikhil didn't say a word. Prove it. Let's go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm digging my grave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get it. We have shit. You guys have Shea Gildas Alexander on your team. I'm going to name some deals. You let me know if it's a deal or no deal. Are you taking okay. the trip? Okay. First up, Shea Gildas Alexander for De'Aaron Fox and Keegan Murray. Don, if you pick up that phone, you are fired. They're blocked. I don't ever <laughs> want to hear any calls from the Sacramento Kings. Hell no. De'Aaron Fox is hooping, but he is not on Shea's level. Sad to say. They're both out of the Keegan Murray makes up that gap? Nah. nah does not. Nah. It's, I'm keeping Shea on my team. Uh, I mean, is a nice, it's hard to trade a top 10 guy, but if you're going to do it, 
getting like a top 16 guy plus a three that can replace Josh Giddy in your lineup, you might be a better team. I, I'm not. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm not trading away the, deal. the, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. the foundation no of my team. Yeah, I'm lying. When De'Aaron Fox Keep gets a shit. skim deal, let me know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this man is Keep moved shit. by skims. He yeah, needs until they pull them in one of these, let me know. Until then, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, this isn't a bad trade, though. This is, this is as close as you're going to get for another elite point guard. Yeah, yeah, this is not bad at all, but it's still yeah. not great. Next deal. Shea for Devin Booker straight up. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. You can stay out there. You can stay out there, Devin. Yeah. Right? Listen, drive This your... is tough. Is it? It's, it's, like, it's, it's not like the 10th. It's like two yeah. fringe top 10 players. And They're one of them the is years younger than the other. I'm taking Shea. He's so like maybe Shea's two years. Now. He's, not that, yeah. he's not that young. He's like, Shea's 25. Debo's like 26 maybe or 27 now. It's not nah, that bro. crazy of a difference. Nah, bro. I'm taking, I'm, I'm keeping Shea. It's easy. <sighs> what, like, why, why would I take Devin Booker over Shea? Devin Booker dated Kylie Jenner. Oh. Listen, do we don't, care? Listen, don't get into a, an aura battle with Shea Gilgis Alexander. All right? <laughs> That's what we're not going to do because he's going to come out on top most of the time. And this is one of those times. <laughs> okay. All right. Y'all need to see. a milkman, bro. <laughs> no, relax. I knew you were going to say that shit. Name. No facts. I knew you were going to say that shit. <laughs> no, Shea's probably up. a slightly better defender right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's a higher volume scorer. We don't have the closeout game concerns we have with Devin Booker, who kind of falls slide a lot. It's close because Devin Booker is that guy too. But I don't see why you would disrupt your team and get rid of Shea for someone exactly. who's like equal footing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Shea's the franchise. Let's keep it that way. No deal. Facts. Next up. Shea for LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, and two first round picks. <laughs> Brother, this I'm not taking the deal. Hold on, I'm not no. taking the deal. I'm Hold on, think about it. Think about it. This not in my haul. front office. Listen, this is a haul. For what? So I can phone? for what? So I can get a point guard who misses half the season every year. Listen, <laughs> walk with me. Lamelo Ball averaging like 25 and like eight this season. Now, yes, he has gone through <laughs> yeah, his injuries, 10 games. but 15. walk with him. Chill. <laughs> walk with me, Brandon Miller. Averaging like a cool 15. Two first round picks. Them boys is ass right now. And they're going the to continue to be ass. Exactly. Now, with that being said, I'm still hanging up the phone. God <laughs> The damn, walk is I over. Thought, <laughs> I thought we had one. Yeah, no, sorry. not at all. Shane's no, no, no. untouchable sucks. in this circumstance. If you gave me four first round picks, now we talking. <laughs> That's the only time. You want the I'm franchise. Really I might as well give you the D to the stadium, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna need that. Give me Jordan's. Give me Jordan's. <laughs> I need that too. To a part of that, I need 25. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. No deal, I guess. Thought I had you. Is that the last one? Oh, next up, Shea for Joel Embiid, the mm -hmm. MVP, soon to be two time. Mm -hmm. Joel no, next to Chet is insane. That I is a top three heaven. to four player in the league. Oh, man. No. Now, this has to be considered seriously. You have, to be honest with you, I might actually do this because this immediately puts me in real championship contention. I can just, Presti has hella picks. I can just trade for another point guard. I would do it. <laughs> I would do it. Joel is different right now. We finally no. got one. Deal. Give me the soon-to-be two-time MVP at the And you powers. guys, mm -mm. you messed up. I know he's older. I think we have a championship window now. Give me the deal. Shut up, Donovan. This is my franchise. Deal. 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 Sign me in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to vote Donovan out of the majority ownership. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to quit. Veto. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to run my own franchise. <laughs> Collusion. Jazz from the high room. All right. Next thing we got. Oh, I we have two more TikToks in. left. <laughs> we got two more TikToks. We're going to do something we haven't done in a long time. Underrated, overrated, or properly rated. Oh. So I'm going to name some NBA players, and you let me know where you think they stand based on common perception of what you think they're viewed as. Common Bro, perception equals three tweets that I've seen on my timeline today. <laughs> <laughs> and this picture of Dylan Brooks is crazy. It's sassy as hell. He's like, mm -mm, well, what the fuck is this? He's swinging his what hips the hell? in this picture. Bro. I know. This is sassy. Now you know you that. Know what I mean. You know that. Hey, y'all clip that. Y'all clip that. Mm -mm. Let's get uh, clip that. Y'all tweet that at me, please. 
<laughs> uh, bro, y'all right, see. So you get it. Underrated, overrated, or properly rated. First up, Jason Tatum. I oh. kind of think that Jason Tatum is a little bit underrated right now. Right? We, underrated. Okay. We we talked we talked about him in our rankings episode last week. And everyone's just kind of bored. They're like, listen, Jason Tatum, he's going to come out here, get 28 points, play good defense, right? Be be the center of an offense? Nah, eh, ho-hum. I, I, think we should, <laughs> I, I think we should give Jason Tatum a little bit more love. I think he's properly rated. No one ever is I ever going to so say he's a top five player. Everyone at the same time understands that he's top 10. He's properly rated. Yeah, he's firmly a top 10 guy that isn't in the upper echelon of MVP contenders every year. But he's right outside of that, pushing into that. Any year from now, any year now, he can win a championship and earn his way into that. But right now, I think he's probably rated. Yeah, I, hate. I, 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 know, I know y'all hate. I know y'all hate. Fuck the Celtics. <laughs> There's the hate. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox. Hmm. Ooh. I might. It's a tricky one because he's definitely highly rated right now. He's rising, yeah. but I don't think that consensus has come around on De'Aaron enough. So I'm going to say I, you're right. You also rated him 22nd in your top 30 list. So you might be the reason he's underrated. You are. Shameful, man. Shame. 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 <laughs> That's probably out of sync. Facts. <laughs> Sound like a catastrophe. In Stop hating. Stop hating, man. Stop hating. <laughs> I think De'Aaron Fox has been like probably a top 15 player this year. He's really Easily. making that leap and can be like in John Morant conversations pretty soon. Or if not now, I'm going to go a little yeah. bit underrated. Yeah, that three-point shot has taken him to another level. That's rare air that he belongs to be in. He's definitely underrated. Facts. Next up, Jaron Jackson Jr. <sighs> I think he's properly rated, right? Uh, I, think, I, think, I think he's okay. What are you, you going to say? Underrated? I kind of want to say underrated because of the summer Ooh. that he had. It was that a man, bad summer. It was I, a bad that, summer. That, that man is the reigning DPOY. So Do you think he's a top five defensive player in the league? He should be, yeah. Off, off the, off he's the not. Top, off the top of my head, I don't know. He's not. Pro- probably not. This man is overrated. Whoa, he's not a top five defensive player there in the league? There we go. Wow. Let's start these conversations up. Let's start these conversations up. Gobert, Giannis, AD, immediately. Joel Embiid's a better defender, I think. Facts. Uh, Th- like he's just one spot left. Is Jaren there? Is there nobody else better? Is he a better defender than Draymond? Is yeah, he better than yeah, Bam? Draymond... Yeah, is he better compared than to Draymond this season? Yeah, I'd rather take Jaren defense than Draymond for sure. I mean, Draymond's sure. like liable to like exactly. Like That's the issue. Like, <laughs> you need insurance when you play against Draymond Green. I don't need no insurance <laughs> when I'm going against when I'm going against Jaren. No, I think he's slightly overrated, but he can he can still get better. But as a DPOY, I don't think he's a top five defender. The Grizzlies have a top seven defense, and it's mostly because of this man right here. So I don't I can't lean overrated. We're all split. That's crazy. Nah, man. I'm just finding a reason to say overrated because I haven't said it yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, who cares? Uh, I'm with you. He's overrated. Damn. Let's go. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not voted. Let's get it out. Next up, Cade Cunningham. Ah, oh, poor Cade. No. He's properly God, rated. Man. Everyone knows he's in jail. He's, <laughs> he's in hell. Alcatraz. <laughs> he's Basketball. in Detroit. Alcatraz. We <laughs> just feel thing. bad for him. <laughs> <sighs> he's in the mud. I guess he's Man's properly playing, rated, yeah. A lot of Man's people are starting to say, yeah. A lot of people are saying he's overrated, though, because he isn't able to help carry him over. <laughs> if you say Ken Cunningham's overrated because he can't win with the worst team in the league, you're stupid as fuck. I, can't I, think, listen, bro, you, if, if, I think before yesterday's game against the Nets, a lot of people would have said overrated. And then they saw him drop 40 and still lose, and they're like, all right, he's, he's fine. Like, it's, it's not his fault. <laughs> Gotta give it to him. <laughs> now, put him on a competent team. We're gonna see somebody that actually looks like a future all-star. Thanks. Exactly. Underrated. Agreed. Underrated up, for sure. Joel Embiid. I'm gonna say underrated, bruh. I gotta say it outright. <laughs> he, Before listen. Donovan gets going, motherfuckers like you are why he's underrated. He is a top three <laughs> player in the league. He is going to be a back-to-back MVP. Top three. Keep his powers. <laughs> top three player in the league. People like to say he's overrated because he gets hurt in the playoffs and everything. I understand. It's been disappointing. He gets way too much hate than he deserves. I'm sick of hearing shit about fouls and the discourse around that. Shut up. It's such an annoying <laughs> discourse. We get it. You don't like watching it. It's still a points. It matters. It's a skill. And it's a skill that a lot of players don't have. He You're definitely all is underrated. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, he's definitely underrated, bro. 
averaging 34, 35 points per game. He's having a much better season after an incredible MVP performance. And last six season. assists. He's actually being an offensive hub. This Good man deserves God. more credit than he's gotten. And he's probably going to be on the all defensive team. He's definitely underrated. Y'all done? Oh my yeah. God. Y'all done? <laughs> he said that <laughs> as if like a super villain. <laughs> he's looming. Yeah. Listen, this man is overrated. All right. Uh. <laughs> this man is overrated. From guys like you who don't oh. care. Listen, <laughs> listen, first of all, he's not top three at all. He's not better than Jokic, not better than Giannis, not better than Steph, not better than, than Luka, right? You can you can argue top five if you want. He's not top four. I'm not giving him that. That's one. Two, <laughs> you act like it's not a superstar's job to just be regular, right? Can you be can <laughs> you be can you be competent come April, right? And he can't do it. That's part of your job. <laughs> Everybody has a role. Derek White has to play a role. Duncan Robinson has to knock down threes. Everybody has to play your role. You want to be that good? You want to be a superstar? Be decent in the playoffs. And Joel Embiid, up until this point, has fallen off year after year after year. I don't want to hear it, okay? He's overrated. He's not top three. Oh, don't give me that. No, I can't Listen, lie. Don't I give can't me lie. That. Luka might be better than him. I might be lying. <laughs> don't give me that. Don't Listen. give me top three. He might be top four. I don't know. <laughs> but with that being said, we're talking about this season, and I have to sadly disagree with you, Donovan. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You're making valid points, but I don't care. Underrated. Underrated it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that. Nah, he's probably, he's probably, he's probably four. Luka, Luka probably deserves to be better than them. I don't know. This man just said Luka work. might be the best player in the league. And I, was like, I know, I know. Maybe he's, <laughs> 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 he's not with the Like... <laughs> Uh, look, look, B might be the best player in the league at this rate. <laughs> Just like him, all it takes is one playoff push, and we're going to have crazy conversations. Go yeah. ahead and do it. You haven't done it. <laughs> Neither is Luca. <laughs> Next up, DeJounte Murray. Oh, man. Depends who you ask, but I think properly rated. I think he's, he's fine, right? He's not somebody that you want to build your franchise around. And the Hawks clearly see him as like, hey, maybe we can get him out of here. So they're fine. They're okay. Off, Listen, off DeJounte Murray. to Landry Fields, extremely overrated. To everybody in the Hawks front office, giving up, but actually four first round picks, overrated as hell. But to the overrated common person, fuck, bro. he was supposed to come probably, in to be a lockdown defender, fixing their defense next to Trey Young, going to be the secondary ball handler to help their offense. It's been nothing but failure since he's gotten there. Not all his fault, but he hasn't helped at all to elevate them in really any way. His defense this year has straight up been bad, incredibly inconsistent. I don't know how he couldn't be overrated. You just hate this man. Can't be. He's not incredibly overrated. You act like his numbers are poo-poo platter. He's not poo-poo platter. He's shooting There's no he's impact. Put up 20. I guess you're right. It's not his fault that they paired him with another point guard. That was a stupid fucking decision. Exactly. But he hasn't brought the team what he was supposed to. It just, it just, a, bro, this is just mid on mid. And when you do that, you get a catastrophe in front of you. Put him on a team like the Lakers. Hey, man, you're going to be talking. You're going to be dancing. Get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? All right, last one. Anthony Edwards. Hmm. Properly rated for now, probably. Maybe a little maybe, overrated. Maybe a little bit overrated. Maybe a little maybe. bit overrated. Maybe I can see that. People really love him. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool, right? He's a, he's a cool personality, but like when you talk about the elite, elite scores, he hasn't gotten there yet. Like he's not scoring like Devin Booker. He's not scoring like Shea, right? He's not, he's not even really scoring like Jason Tatum. So I think there's still another leap that he has to take scoring the yeah. basketball. People were definitely ready to crown him a top 10 player because they just like want him to date their daughter or something. But he <laughs> is making the leap to like a top 15 to 20 player. <laughs> so I can see probably rated, but maybe a little bit overrated for that reason. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think this season, though, he can probably get to that level, but time will only tell. For sure. One more playoff push, and that quickly flips to being properly rated. Facts. And that's the end of that segment. We have, let's see, one more video left before we Let's get out of here. It. We're going to talk about NBA MVP seasons and which ones were more impressive. Okay. We haven't done this in like a year. We did this a while ago, like last season. Yeah. I'm going to pull out a couple more, that uh, some matchups that we didn't do the first time around. Let's get it going. Real simple and plain. Two MVP let's seasons, roll. you let me know which one's better. Let's roll. First off, 2022 Nikola Jokic versus 2020 Giannis. Ooh. Did 2020 Giannis win defensive player this year too? I think he did. Yes. 
Jokic That's did different. The, Jokic did a lot with no help, but Giannis was DPOI at the same time. I got to. I'm gonna have to Giannis. lean Giannis. Yeah, I winning get. Defensive Player of the Year while also having that same offensive output, being the best at those two categories. Might That's have a to rare error, bro. Right. That's hard to do. It's just different. even rare if you think Jokic error. was a slightly more better. Even uh, even if you think Jokic, damn, I can't talk. I'm like, never mind. Even if you think Jokic was a better player this season, that just that, just the simple fact of having both trophies at once is so hard to do. You got to give it to Giannis. Yeah, the last time that we saw someone win MVP and def- Defensive Player of the Year was MJ. That's crazy. These are the conversations that season of Giannis was in. Crazy peak. Yes. Yeah. Just different. Next up, 2006 Steve Nash or 2023 Joel Embiid. Ah, two fraudulent <laughs> MVPs against each other. I see what you did here. I see what you did here. Steve Nash MVP these. just pissed me off. I don't know why. It just <laughs> it just does. It just irritates me. You don't deserve that shit. Listen, I I would got, give it to I would give it to Steve Nash over Joel Embiid because as we've said many times before, Joel Embiid's MVP push, while he did have a great season, it was based off some race relations off of bad <laughs> off of bad intention talking points i gotta give it to steve nash no yeah steve nash at least was the centerpiece of one of the best teams in the league and really had like the best player and the best team argument for him in the west joel and b was just the benefit of a good pr campaign by kendrick perkins this is a it was this is such a rare weird robbery Shout but out was joel and b a better player than steve nash though at that point in time I mean, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Steve Nash was out here leading the number one offense in the league, right? Changing the way people play offense, kind of revolutionizing it. You got yeah. Steve got Nash it. is such an unorthodox player that like it's hard to have those comparisons. But I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He's, he was great. We all know Joel and B better. Let's stop that. <laughs> we all. <laughs> I don't know. That. know. I don't know. I don't that, know that for sure. Steve that that might that might be a good conversation. If you don't know for Fuck sure, I'll Steve tell Nash you. Just it's for sure. Confident about Joel. Facts. <laughs> There you go. I'm going Steve Nash just because I'm not over the fact that Jokic got rubbed. Okay. <laughs> Still pissed. 2016 Curry versus 2013 LeBron James. Ooh. Guys, listen. 2016 I, listen, Curry. Is- I know. The best when, seasons of both greats. When I am 75 years old, I'm going to be telling my grandkids, you weren't there. You don't understand how good <laughs> 2016 Steph Curry was. Like, 2016 he Steph Curry. UK. We know, we know how good LeBron was. And people were saying, is Steph Curry better than LeBron? Because of how good he was in 2016. He wasn't playing in the fourth quarter and still averaging 30 (laughs) points a night. Come on now. This is different. Yeah. I think this is the prime example of 2013 LeBron being a better player, but Curry having the more impressive MVP season. There's a very, there's a difference there. It's unanimous, man. What can we say? Uh, we've seen LeBron like literally break down teams and one-on-one players, but we never seen him break the league and force the entire NBA to play a certain way. And that's what the season established. Listen, this isn't the best player of all time in Curry, but this might be the most impressive MVP you've ever seen. Facts. It's you not crazy bro. to say. It's in those conversations. Thousands. Yeah, no, I think it is. It is the the conversation. Yep. Unanimous, right? How many unanimous has there been? Is it only him? It's never, it's it's only never him. been anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's only him. The only unanimous. That's that's hard to top. <laughs> the second, yeah, LeBron was close to it, but a few people fucking obviously hate LeBron, so he wasn't that. <laughs> Robbery. Don't, yeah. don't get me started. All right, last one. 2001 Allen Iverson or 2017 Russell Westbrook? These are the same exact vibes, man. <laughs> yeah. The feel-good stories, doing a lot with a little. Who are we picking? We got to give it. To the man who was playing with Pepe Sanchez. I got to give it to Alan oh. Iverson. <laughs> <laughs> no. Got to give it to him. You talk about playing with Pepe Sanchez. This man, Russell Westbrook, was playing with Andre Roberson. He played with <laughs> Kyle Singler. Do you even know who that is? Oh, I forgot, Kyle I Singler? forgot about Kyle Singler. You want to talk about a mid-off. Give me Pepe Sanchez versus Andre Roberson 1v1. <laughs> We're going to break backboards. Bro, it's nasty <laughs> out here. It's nasty out here. Ennis Canner, this is Ennis Canner pre CNN or Fox News. Gross, bro. <laughs> oh, pre uh, prime Ennis Canter? Prime yes. Ennis Freedom? Oh, I'm going with fucking Allen Iverson. <laughs> <laughs> I just buried my case with that. You lost me there. Allen Iverson, you're the goat. You win. <laughs> 
simple fact you don't have I don't have to vote for Ennis Cantor in any way. <laughs> nah, man, but you didn't see Russell Westbrook go ahead and decimate the Denver Nuggets playoff hopes with a game winner at the end of the season. That's was that was during his MVP season. That's top tier. Man, white kids were pulling up to the arena in fake braids and shooting sleeves to try to be like <laughs> Allen Iverson. But that's Don't. aura though. That's not that's not basketball. <laughs> Who you cares? Think I'm gonna discount or <laughs> who cares? <laughs> you lost it's me, Allen Iverson. You win. It's Allen Iverson. Come on, Russ. They don't know ball, man. It's just a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Russ. Though. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the show. What a generation! What should they're still here, Mo. What should these boys comment? <laughs> should they comment? <laughs> <laughs> Where are my Shondies at? Hey, next merch drop leaked. Here they are, right here. <laughs> <laughs> the comment, not the Shea undies. Usually, <laughs> not the Shea undies in the comments. Let's get mad sassy today. <laughs> Five ninety nine spring. They're gonna be available to everyone worldwide. We'll Shipping see y'all later, man. <laughs> like and subscribe. Follow us on all socials. We'll see you in a week. Or tune in Monday for the live stream. We'll see you in a few days. Thanks.